Okay, what's up, guys? It says I'm live. Hopefully, I paid my internet bill so we can just get right into it. Notify my friends that we are all gathering. This table is absolutely garbage. But what's up, guys? Lightsaber Samurai here, back again for another live stream. And this time, I've got more pickups for you. Plus, we're just going to hang out and talk about some stuff. So, uh, hurry up and hop in, join the fun, and I'm watching it on YouTube just to um, just to monitor the stream. So far, so good. It looks okay, and I'm going to share this with some friends so we all can gather around, gather around, wait for some of you to show up, and then we will dig right in to these uh, right into these pickups here. So, without further ado. No, let's discard that. Mm -hmm. Oh, looks like we got a couple people in here already. Rave Warrior Alpha. Hey, Lightsaber, what's going on, brother? It is, is it possible to join your stream with us? Okay. A uh, little bit later, a little bit later, I want to get into these pickups and whatnot. Uh, cool Gamer says, what's up? Easy Going Gamer, what's going on? Checking in. Uh, I Duran 10, can't wait for the new pickups. Yeah, I got a couple of good things this time. Loco Maverick says, what's good? What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? Again, let me just hit a share real fast to some of my friends just to let them know we are in the building, and then we will get right underway here. Okay, let's see. So how's everybody doing? How's everybody's Mother's Day? I didn't get to do much. I was working today, so I just got home not too long ago. So me and my my moms, we got to do it up next weekend. Get my moms and my dad, probably snag up my, my nieces, and maybe we'll go to the zoo or do something neato like that. Let's see. And let me paste that joint, post that joint. And we are in the building. Okay, so cool gamer, yours was good. Right on, right on. So shout out to all the good moms out there, and even the ones that aren't, you know, good. You know, shout out to you anyway. Hopefully, hopefully you get better at your job. No, I'm just kidding. But like I said, we got a few in here. Got five in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I guess I've actually been picking up kind of heavy lately, so I probably won't even show all of them in this stream. I'll probably do like half. Uh, I've got about half of my pickup sitting right here. Um, and like I said, I've been going hard for various systems. I'll start out with the first one here. This one, oops, I got a notification for somebody else. Let me... <laughs> Easy going, says shout out to all the below average moms out there. Yeah, man. Oh, local Maverick purple is also your favorite color. Yeah, man. I've been digging the purple a lot lately, and the purple and blue, I think that might just have to become like my official color scheme. I, I play with a lot of colors all the time, and uh, it's nice about my setup because I've got like a bunch of remote controls for my key light here. I activate that from my phone, the purple strip. You can barely see it in the corner there. I can act, uh, I manipulate that with my phone, use this to manipulate uh, the fill light, the hair light that's shining on me, as well as the light strip over here. So it's nice to have it all like at the tip of my fingers. And so depending on how I'm feeling, I can switch up the look and to match the mood of the video and all of that. So that's really nice. But uh, yeah, so let's see going on to the first game. We'll just get right started. There's a PS Vita title, and PS Vita, um, I've been trying to get that as much as possible. PS Vita, that's a hard system to collect for, especially in the wild. You can still find them easy enough if you shop eBay, but then you got to pay eBay prices. So um, I found this at the pawn shop. Or no, no, I found this at the, uh, not the pawn shop, what do you call it? The uh, the flea market. I found this at the flea market. My buddy sold this to me uh, for 20 bucks, and that is Uncharted Golden Abyss on the PSP or PS Vita. And this one shot up in price like recently. Like this one, I think, is hovering around like 50 bucks again. So it shot all the way back up to new price. And from what I understand, it's a good game. I like the Uncharted series well enough. Um, 
And so this one seems to play really well from what I've seen and heard. So I'm excited to try that out. Graphics on that look actually really good for a PS Vita game, but the PS Vita is actually a fantastic system. So let's see, there's a term in therapy theory, the good enough mother. <laughs> Cool game, so fun. So yeah, you've got a chance to play it. I, I've heard people complain about um, Uncharted because like the the touch mechanics and stuff like that, but I don't know. As long as they're not too annoying, I'm I'm down with trying it out. That's one of the games that makes me start collecting for the Vita. Yeah, man, the Vita is a fantastic system, and it's hard to find Vita games complete in box nowadays. Like I said, especially out in the wild. Um, if you pay the price, you can do it um, on a, you can do it on eBay or online. But I said a lot of times, especially nowadays with Sony prices going up across all the platforms, um, yeah, it's gonna be you, you're gonna be paying them eBay prices, unfortunately. So that's the that's the only bad thing about that. But like I said, getting that half price, I was with that, and it wasn't a game like I was super duper excited for, but it was a Vita game I had to get in the collection, and it's one of like the. Uh, it's one of like the staples of the PS Vita, right? Uh, I still don't even have Killzone Mercenary, and unfortunately, Killzone Mercenary is now expensive again. So I gotta track that down. Garrett Spencer's in the house. Says, "What's up? What's up? What's up, my man? What's up? How's it going? How's it going?" Um, Vita prices are mental here. Can't even find in the wild. Only eBay. Yeah, like I said, you'll find them every now and again. Uh, Retro Tibron is in the house. Says, "I suggest." modding it so you can add retro games so it allows you to play online and collect trophies for your vita games oh okay um i might do that uh i've got the uh the, the vita tv or the playstation tv also so that so so this guy i might mod this guy instead so i definitely actually do want to mod this so i can unlock all the games so i can play them on the big screen so uh, yeah, and I'm excited to actually mod that in the future. So I'll definitely do that. And uh, I know there's mods you can do now with memory cards and stuff. So you can put a ton of memory on it, which is great because those proprietary Vita memory cards are absolute insane with the price. So yeah, beat kills on the Vita fun shooter. Yeah, and I love the I love the kills on series. Um, and that's the only one that I'm missing. So I definitely need to add that to the old collection. Uh, let's see. Moving on here, I got a couple of Xbox 360 titles, and be on the lookout for these because these are definitely going to be expensive in the future. Uh, first one here, I also have this one on the uh, PlayStation 3, and that's Fist of the North Star: Ken's Rage. And I looked at this game on the PS3 like two years ago. I did a video of uh, video games based on anime. And this one was one of the ones on my list, the PlayStation uh, 3 version. So I'm excited to see how this one plays. J Chip is in the house. What's going on, man? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. I am doing well. But uh, Ken's Rage on the PS3 is already going up in price. Last I saw, this one was uh, sitting, I think this one has shot back up to like 40 or 50 bucks again. But you can get the, the 360 version for like 15, 10 or 15. So definitely worth that. And so if you see that, yeah, I, I bought this for $9.99 at Vintage Stock recently, uh, probably like a month or a month or so ago. So yeah, definitely excited to play that. Um, also said, I strongly recommend Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep if you're collecting for the PSP. Uh, I think I might have that one already. I think I do have that one. Boy Boy 12 says, yo, 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 welcome to the stream. Sir, I got a couple more PS2 games, especially this Mafia game that's like GTA, more like True Crime Shoots of LA, uh, New York, but it's called NARC. Oh, yeah, I got NARC on the uh, original Xbox recently. And so how many Fist of the North Star games are there? There are several um, in the seventh generation. So we PlayStation 3, Xbox um, 360. I know of this one, Fist of the North Star, Ken's Rage, and also Fist of the North Star uh two or excuse me ken's rage two so this is a follow-up to the first game and this one will get expensive because this one did not come out on the ps3 in america um so this one only got a, a us release on the xbox 360 and I, you can't see it because i got the manual focus locked but uh that one i got for 399 so 
that was exciting to find it at that price and caught GameStop slipping recently, which I told myself I was going to swear off GameStop, but uh, I got to keep dealing with them because now they're blowing out PlayStation 4 stuff. And I've definitely been getting a lot of PlayStation 4 stuff, which you'll see here coming up. Um, but yeah, I've definitely been collecting PlayStation 4 pretty heavily recently. I don't have a PS5 yet, have no desire to buy one anytime soon, anytime in the next year or so. Um, I heard rumors that they were coming out with a redesign and that makes sense. That's what I've been waiting for. Been waiting for their slim or their pro version. So um, in the meantime, I'll just let the PlayStation 5 library increase while they do that. And in the meantime, I'll pick up all these PS4 games before they get stupid in price like I did with the PS3. So like I said, I just now started collecting PS4, even though I've had a PS4 for like four years, three or four years, because my girlfriend got it for me for Christmas. But uh, for the last three or four years, I've been collecting PS3 and Xbox 360. So luckily, all the PS3 games that recently shot up in price, most of them I already have. So that's lucky. But There's a fighting game on PS2 as well. Oh, is there? I didn't hear about that. There's a uh, there's a Fist of the North Star game on uh, PS4 as well that I'm on the lookout for. And I can't remember. It's called Heaven something, I think. Um, I know it's there, so I got to grab that. Oh, Snaps. Waves and Games is in the house. What's up, Pete? Welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome. We're just talking about some pickups here. But anyway, definitely those for the Xbox 360. Like I said, you can get Fist of the North or yeah, you can get Ken's Rage, the first one on the PS3, but that one's kind of expensive now. So I would recommend getting it, the Xbox 360 version for 10 bucks. And we got to talk about that. Um, I, I should make a video on that because there's a lot of these PlayStation 3 games that's shot up drastically in price that you can get for pennies on the dollar on the Xbox 360. And again, especially with the multi-platform releases, the Xbox 360 version tends to play better. So, I mean, this one will probably play better. It might even look better in some cases. But uh, yeah, Lost Paradise, that's it. That's the one I'm thinking about. Was the Fist of the North Star on PS4? Very good. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to grab that. I need to find that, and I need to find the Berserk game that was on the PS4. I think it was called Band of the Hawk. And I, yeah, I slept on that back in the day when I used to see it in GameStop all the time. I was actually waiting for it to drop in price and it got as low as like $25, $27 somewhere in there. I'm like, okay, man, I'm gonna wait until it gets down to $19.99 and then I'm gonna snag it up. And then it disappeared. So um, hopefully I can find that soon. I might have to eBay that one, but I think we still got a little bit longer before PS4 games start to get super crazy in price. So um, yeah. Let's see. Still can't believe the PS2 on Amazon is $249. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I'm not paying $249 for a PS2, especially when you can get like backwards compatible systems for like the same price. Like I can get a my PS3 fat is worth $250 and it can play PlayStation 3, 2, and 1 game. So yeah, there's no reason for me to mess with that. I've been seeing plenty of PS4 game lots at random garage sales in my area. Yeah, man. Uh, again, a lot of people are blowing out their PS4 stuff to try to finance getting that PS5 and that Xbox Series X. And for me, I see no reason to do that anytime soon. Because like I said, those systems are going to come down in price anyway in the near future. And so I will just get when they re-release the Pro or the Slim version or whatever they got. I'm looking here at the rest of my pickups. All my other pickups are from PlayStation systems. So uh, let's see. The only PlayStation 1 game I got recently, this is one that I've been trying to knock off my list for like 35 years. Well, not that long, but like 20 years easy. And I remember this game back in the day, and I always wanted to play it, and then it got ran disappeared, and I never found it. But then uh, recently, I was in a Lawrence at my favorite game store, Game Nut there, and got this for $19.99. That is Gaikido. Uh, Furious four player fighting, uh, very similar to the fighting force game that came out, uh, during that time period. But I think this one's better. So I'm excited to check out guy keto. It is a, uh, four player beat em up game and you can play all four players using the multi tap. So, um, unfortunately I don't have three friends, so I won't be able to use that function, but 
still, this is a game that I've been looking for for years and years and years. And this one's starting to shoot up in price. PS2 and PlayStation 1 games are really starting to shoot up in price lately as well. It's not just PS3. And so I'll have to talk about that in the near future as well. Uh, let's see, what am I missing in the chat here? The limited print PS4 games have been expensive for the longest. Yeah, there's a few of them that have been been up and been going up. Uh, so, yeah, I resell on eBay and the PS4 games are all like 10 bucks or less. Definitely time to buy PS4 games. Absolutely. Uh, one type of PS4 game that is actually, I think, going to go up in price first, and I've already seen it with a lot of their games, is PlayStation VR. And so if you guys follow my, my buddy, uh, Professor Joe Casey, on YouTube. Uh, I think his channel now is called Gaming with the Professor. So just type that in. You'll find him. He, he's he got the... He also shares a love of PlayStation VR like myself, but his collection is much more impressive than mine. And so he's really been snagging up a lot of the future heavy hitters on the system. And so PlayStation... Um, yeah, PlayStation VR, if you guys haven't got into that yet, I would suggest doing so probably soon within the next probably six to eight months or so. I can see some of those games like Astrobot and Moss and some of those games really shooting up in price. Uh, there was a Psychonauts game that I actually did scoop up. Uh, no Man's Sky, because it has the VR mode, both versions of that game are going to shoot up in price. So, uh, yeah, there's a couple of them. Oh, video game with the professors in the chat. What's going on, boss? Bro, I didn't even get a notification. YouTube tripping. <laughs> yeah, man, I... I went ahead and put out an email or uh, put out like a Facebook post on a couple of places just in case. Cause yeah, I, I feel the same. I feel like a lot of people that have like notifications turned on for me, just don't get, uh, just don't get notified. See local Maverick says, I don't know. Oh, I'm missing. So let me go back up here. Uh, for example, physical copy of blasphemous is well over a hundred bucks on PS4 and switch. Uh, I haven't heard of that. I'm on the lookout for that now. Once PS5s are available to the public at Walmart, Best Buy, etc., in store, I'll be getting a PS5 for sure. Yeah, and that's me. I'm just not out here going to compete, you know, with everybody standing in line, plant, paying scalper prices, and doing all that. Once it's readily available, then I'll take a look at it. But there, for me, I'm I'm just not that excited to play like the 15 or so games that they have for the PS5 right now. Uh, there's definitely some cool games coming out and some cool games on the horizon. But by the time I buy those, I should be done pretty much collecting for Xbox one and PS four, uh, which I I'm not even collecting Xbox one for real, for real. I've been getting pretty much everything PS four and uh, I'll grab Xbox one for its exclusives, but that's about it. So I don't know why in the UK, the stuff is the stupid fat cases for PS one and dreamcast. Let's see. Uh, now we're 20 years in the PS2 and Sony's expanded generations. Do you think they regret making the PS2 backwards compatible? Uh, I think they... Mm, I don't know. I think at the time it sold them a lot of PlayStation 2s. I think that sold them a lot of Unix, especially during the time period because online was just taken off. So there wasn't a lot of online shopping. So you couldn't buy uh these games digital at that point so grabbing the physical copies and then playing them on the new playstation 2 um i think i think it was a smart move at the time to make the playstation 2 backwards compatible um but now they're probably wishing they hadn't that being said they already made their money off the playstation 2 they sold 151 million units so um i i don't think they're too bothered by it Let's see, bro. I didn't. Oh, yeah, I already read that one. Hey, my uncle is moving to Wichita in June. So when I visit, we can play. Oh, for real? That's awesome. Yeah, that'd be cool to finally meet you in person. Actually, uh, we've been thinking about moving away from Wichita in the next year or so. But I'll definitely be here in June. Uh, I'll definitely be here for the summer. Uh, let's see. I know Gravity Rush is expensive, isn't it? Yeah, Gravity Rush, it went ahead and shot back up uh, the PlayStation, the PS Vita version. That's another staple on the PS Vita that I don't have. So slap myself for that. I don't have Gravity Rush. I don't have, I just got Uncharted. Uh, I don't I don't have Killzone. Uh, I did get Tearaway, but for the most part, a lot of the staples, like I'm missing. So I did, I have got quite a few like kind of 
kooky, like kind of like hidden gem type stuff for the PlayStation Vita. So that's cool. But most of the staples, like for, and usually the staples, those are game, those are the games that'll be around for a while. So I usually don't go after the main games right away. I try to go grab the more obscure stuff later, knowing that the staples on the system, they'll be around and they'll be cheaper at the time that have, but the PS Vita itself is just kind of an obscure system to go, you know, to, to collect for. So all the staples went up fast. We saw the similar thing with the Dreamcast as well. Um, where basically all Dreamcast games are expensive, but you know, stuff like Sonic Adventure and Sonic 2 or Power Stone 2, like a lot of the staples on the Dreamcast, well over a hundred bucks at this point. And so it was kind of the Vita kind of went out like the Dreamcast in that regard. So yeah, because of the way I collect, I missed out on all the staples because I usually don't go for the staples first. Uh, not just PSVR, but anything horror related. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I went ahead and picked up Agony on the Xbox One. I haven't tore into it yet, and it was over there that I'm going to showcase because I'll probably do another live stream this week where I go over all the rest of the games. Because like I said, I, I've been, I grabbed in the last month or so, I grabbed something like 30 games or so, which is way more than I collect. But again, I've been spurred on a little bit by the uh, the PlayStation Store closing scare and all of that. So some of these games I had to go ahead and scoop up. Uh, let's see. I just see Fortnite in my local GameStop selling for a hundred bucks, and it's not one of the ones without the disc as the original release. Okay, so if you find Fortnite with the disc for cheap, grab it. Yeah, I remember seeing that at GameStop. Uh, probably like, uh, probably almost a year ago. It was like twenty five, thirty dollars, and I thought, like, man, should I get this? But I just have no, I have no desire to play Fortnite, and so for the most part. I only grab games that I, I know I'm going to play. So I passed on it probably to grab something else that I did want to buy, which was cool. But at the same time, it's like, man, when you see a game rise in price like that, you can't help but think like, man, I should have got it. So I could have flipped it. But let's see, wasn't the PS2 the cheapest DVD player at the time? It was indeed the cheapest. And people forgot about that. Uh, and that's the, that was the same thing with the PS3. And a lot of people like you know, a lot of people like give Sony crap for selling the PS3 at $600, but you got to think at the time, Blu-ray players were like a thousand bucks. So you got one of the best Blu-ray players at the time, you know, a Blu-ray player that was made by Sony, by the company that introduced the format, you know, so you got a high quality Blu-ray in addition to a video game system. And it came included with a web browser so you can surf the web. Like that's a lot for 600 bucks, you know, at the time, especially that was a lot of new technology, you know, for 600 bucks. And the same thing with the, the PS2 being the first, uh, you know, DVD player uh, video game console. So that was huge. A lot of people, um, I think that the, the brilliance of Sony at the time, they were realizing, unlike the other two companies, Microsoft and um, Microsoft and Nintendo, and even Sega, because the Dreamcast was still around at the time, but they realized before anybody else that the video game console was becoming a multimedia device. It was no longer placed in the homes just to play games. It was in the future, video game consoles were going to have a multifacet of functions, and they understood that before anybody else did. So making it a CD player, making it a DVD player at the time, like, uh, you know, and adding, you know, the online gaming later on when that started to, to blossom. But Sony understood, I think, where video games and where video game consoles in general were going. And so, you know, GameCube with the goofy, like, mini cd dvd thing whatever they were doing with the proprietary stuff and you could watch dvds on the xbox but you had to get uh an external like device for it and all of that stuff the dreamcast was a proprietary proprietary uh gd rom and so you couldn't do anything with it so yeah the other companies they played themselves in that regard but they definitely you know, caught up as time went on. Let's see. Uh, if Sony or Microsoft were willing to put out a fully backwards compatible console, I'd be willing to pay a pretty penny. Wish they would commit more to that. Absolutely. And honestly, like Microsoft has been doing more on that front than anybody else lately. Um, you know, they, they, their backwards compatibility is software based. And so that means they have to add patches and then increase its backwards compatibility over time. And the problem with that is by the time, you know, you get to the end of the console's life, it isn't fully backwards compatible like the Xbox 360 
uh, I got it upstairs right now, but the original Xbox 360 and Xbox 360 Elite, which is the one I have, they could play Xbox games. They, they play about 51%, but by the time the Xbox 360 was over, you know, they hadn't crossed everything over. So, you know, there's a lot of games that still simply won't play. And that's the problem with that. And that's, you know, with the uh, the PlayStation 3 and with the early PlayStation 2 models, uh, the PlayStation 3, like, they, it had the Emotion Engine built in. They basically put a PS2 inside the PlayStation 3. So it was good to go with all PlayStation 1 and 2 games from day one and didn't have to rely on patches and stuff. The older the, or the, the later models that came along later, like the 80 gigabyte uh, fat ones that had the four ports, those were uh, software. And so they had some issues with backwards compatibility that they had to fix over time. They still did a lot better with that than Xbox. But right now, Xbox is the only one trying to do backwards compatibility. So I got to give them props for that. I just wish they would do more on that front. And I definitely wish the other consoles would do more as well. Um, yeah, fully backwards compatible console. I wish, man, I wish. Do you have uh, Dangan Rampa for the Vita? Nope, nope. Those, I forgot about that. I missed out on all those games. The Trigger Happy Dangan Rampa, there was two of them. And then there was a third one that, that was like, it wasn't, um, it was more of like a third person shooter. It was like something hard girls or something like that. I almost bought it and I should have bought it. I should have bought it. It was like 35 bucks or 40 bucks of finished stock some time back. And honestly, I didn't have the money. Like I was like, ah, no, I got some bills coming. Up. I got to make sure I have cash for that. But yeah, man, I pass on the Dangan Rampa games. Cause for the most part, that's not really my bag to play those types of games. So man, I should have got them anyway. Uh, luckily, I think they most of them, if not all of them, got remasters on the PS4. So that's probably where I'm going to track them down at because the Vita versions are quite expensive now. Little TT, how am I doing? I am walking on sunshine. We are out here busting out this live stream. I got some cool pickups to show you. I got some more. Let's see. Joe Case says Dying and Rampa trilogy on the PS4 will be a crazy expensive. Yeah, I didn't know they had a trilogy package. So that's definitely what I got my eyes on. Funny enough, the Xbox One S was the cheapest 4K Blu-ray player. Yeah, which is crazy to think about. But the Xbox or but the uh the the Xbox One S also came out several years, you know, it came out in like what 2020. 12 2014 something like that so at the time blu-ray players had been around and they had been a thing but like i said in 2005 when the playstation 3 dropped and yeah it dropped for 600 bucks but in 2005 like that was that was a steal for a blue like people people were talking crap on sony for selling the playstation 3 for 600 dollars and would at the and the same people would just willingly go to like Best Buy and buy a nine hundred dollar Blu-ray player. Like it was, re it was ridiculous. Game preservation is important, and I wish like some of these companies would stop being so stuck up, especially about their super old IPs. Like Nintendo is notorious for that. Like Nintendo, stop tripping and let these people preserve these games. Like that's why I don't cover much Nintendo stuff on my channel. Cause I don't want to be like a Nintendo YouTuber, nothing against Nintendo YouTubers or like switch YouTubers, but Nintendo hasn't been my thing for a long time. So yeah, they just be doing some funny style stuff. And honestly, like they have good games, but I've had my best experiences on the Sony and Microsoft consoles. So that's why I keep reinvesting in those, even though Microsoft made a ton of OG Xbox games playable on the 360, a bunch of them didn't play well. For example, X-Men legends and Tony Hawk four parts of the, yeah. And that's true. And a lot of them um, would also like, you could play them, but like features would be missing. Uh, certain features of the game would be missing. So that, that was an issue. Um, speak on it. People really need to stop giving Nintendo a pass. Absolutely, man. Nintendo has been trash. I'm sorry to say that because I know a lot of my peers really, and you all see, I got Super Mario, wait, lean this way. I got Super Mario in the background, you know what I'm saying? So it's not all bad, you know, but honestly, like I said, I still don't own a Switch. I don't. I don't care to own it. I'm, I don't feel like I'm missing out at all. I really don't because I got a PS4. So, I mean, I don't know. 
like I, I all a lot of the the multi platform games. Why would I play them on the Switch when I can play them on the PS4? Save for the uh, multiplayer aspect of it. But guess what? You can do that with the PlayStation Vita, and that was a function of the Vita that I don't know if Sony just didn't didn't stress enough, or just people just didn't know. But you can hook your Vita. I can hook my Vita to my PS4, and as long as I got internet and I got the game like on my console, like I can access the game from wherever I'm at and I can be playing like the Witcher three on my PlayStation Vita at the park or on the bus or whatever the case. And like I said, so, I mean, whatever, I mean, I'm these days, I'm not much of a, uh, says switch is an updated Wii U. Absolutely. Um, they took the lessons that they learned from the Wii U and refined them. And, you know, the switch is basically a tablet with a physical controller on it. Sorry to say, but I mean, that's the truth. So, I mean, whatever, but let's see if you could pick which one would you rather be in a world with Blu-rays being uh, Blu-rays being HD DVD or the other way around. Uh, uh, no, I, I got to give it to Blu-rays. I remember uh, there was that format war uh, in the early days of the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 with Blu-ray and HD DVD and Blu-rays simply they just hold more data. So they, they got more space on them. So I'm going to go for that, you know, 11 times out of 10. So uh, I think we all made the right choice by back in Blu-ray and yeah, HD DVDs looked fine. They looked good. And I remember having like, like watching HD DVDs and I think uh, it was my cousin. He had the little add on to the 360. And so he collected a bunch of HD DVDs and had a whole HD DVD collection. I don't know what happened to it. Um, but yeah, so he was somebody who invested in that a lot. And then I remember when Blu-ray won, like all the HD DVDs ended up in pawn shops. But what was cool though is you could buy a bunch of great high def movies for like two dollars. So and it ends with the melee competitive scene and the emulation ROMs. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Yeah, but I don't play my switch in the living room and then continue playing it when I need to drop the kids off at the pool. And that's like I said, that's a cool feature. That's a that, that's nice, like to be able to do that. Um, let's see, been hearing the 3DS games are temporarily or temporary on the stroll. People Pokemon XY games are not working. I got to test my versions out. Dude, Pokemon games are they all I mean Pokemon games are always expensive, but every now and then they'll like the, the craze will kind of die down. But definitely we're on the upswing of Pokemon uh game. Like my copy of like Fire Red on the Game Boy Advance is like a hundred bucks loose or something crazy like that. And it was like, man, like they will barely port old games, but will shut down emulation and ROMs. Make that make sense. Who the F was asking for Skyward Sword over other Zelda games? Yeah, who was asking for Skyward Word Sword over like Ocarina of Time or even like, you know, like even like the uh, like the Game Boy and like Game Boy Advance Zelda games? Like, still, uh, I'm glad that they remade. Uh, Link's Awakening because that was at the time I, that still to this day that's my favorite Zelda game. I like it more even than Breath of the Wild. Plus HD DVD scratch easier. That's absolutely true. Uh, Blu-rays are a lot more durable and better made. Like as far as stuff like that goes. Uh, let's see by temporary I mean the flat yeah flash ROMs. Yep. So, like I said, I don't hate Nintendo, but I mean, they're far from my favorite. I got a couple of PSP games lately uh, at the uh, same store in uh, in Lawrence where I, I found my copy of Gaikido. That's some PSP games there. And I like because they actually have like Dreamcast games and Vita games and stuff like in the flesh, which is nice. But I got Fantasy Golf Pangia. And this is kind of like an anime style, like golf game on the PSP. And it looks really interesting. So I thought I'd add it. I like golf games. Uh, it's one of like genre that I always forget about, but I always like them when I play them. And so I, I definitely like the more like kind of arcadey, like fantasy ones. And this one looks really cool. It looks like it's got some kind of quirky anime story mode to it. And they got like a bunch of cool characters that you can play as. So I'm definitely excited. I'll probably check this one out tonight after the stream. Also, on the PSP, I got God's Eater Burst, and I think this is also based on an anime. I've been picking up anime games recently because I definitely want to do a sequel to my video games based on anime uh, that I made like 
two, three years ago. And so at the time, it wasn't a well, a well received video, but it was one of my favorites. And I thought we took a look at some nice games on it. So I'll definitely uh, get back into that. And so I'll definitely have to check this one out. This one looks really cool, like a kind of third person hack and slash action game. But uh, yeah, it looks like you got some cool attacks and whatnot. So definitely excited to check that out. Uh, I got one PS2 game lately. And from Sega uh, on the PlayStation 2, this is Shining Force Exa. And I don't know much about the Shining Force games. I remember them from the Genesis and the Saturn, but I never owned a Genesis or Saturn at the time. So I, I didn't really get in the Shining Force games. But this one looks like they mix like real time and tactical uh, based gameplay in this one and like i said graphics look really cool on the back it's kind of got like a hand painted art style uh god either is like the anime version of monster hunter then i'm all for that i'm definitely all for that um speaking of, i gotta get back into monster hunter me and my girlfriend used to play monster hunter world together and uh yeah i need to get back on that i sucked at the game though but she's like a master at monster hunter world like she cleared the game easy and just got all the best stuff. So I like pairing up with her when I play, but she's so OP now. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. I have to grab this game. This is a PS4 game that I never played. And again, that's because mainly I was focused on seven generation stuff up until recently. So when I saw this cheap at GameStop Jedi Fallen Order, the deluxe edition, uh, I bought this copy. I think it was $17.99 or $18.99, something like that. So uh, I went ahead and got it. Uh, this one, I remember seeing all the gameplay back in the day. My homeboy Slumpenstein was streaming this game pretty heavy at the time, and it looks really good. It still doesn't seem like it captured the type of gameplay and feel that you got with the Jedi Knight games, but I would say this one, it looked better than the Force Unleashed as far as, uh, you know, just kind of the, uh, the lightsaber combat and stuff goes in that. It looks like it has a really cool story, and uh, yes, I'm definitely excited to check that one out. So you have that and the Shining Force game. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. What do you what did you think of that Shining Force game then? Like I said, it looks interesting. I went ahead and got it. It was a little pricey. I think it was like uh, 30 bucks, but I went ahead and bought it just because I had never seen it before. And I'm like, yeah, Shining Force Sega, like this one will probably be expensive in the future. So since I kind of wanted to check it out, I was like, let me just go ahead and buy it. So I won't have to want to check it out later. And then it's like ninety dollars. So. Went ahead and scooped it up. Got a lot of praise, but the industry didn't really give it many accolades. And that's a shame, man. With so many games coming out every year, there's so many more that fall through the cracks. So that's why we that's why we do the hidden gems thing for sure. Uh, I like Fallen Order a lot, but Academy is on a different level, in my opinion. Yeah, man, like that's the that's the remake we need. You know what I mean? I, I hear that they're remaking the Knights of the Old Republic games, which is fantastic. Love the Knights of the Old Republic games, but again, those Jedi Knight games, man, they were so good. And I don't understand why we can't recapture that. Like, I, I don't get it. I don't understand why we can't go back to that, you know? Like, why it's after all these years since, because I think uh, Jedi Academy came out in like 03. So that was the last time we got a Jedi Knight game, but so it was almost 20 years and they still can't capture the gameplay and the versatility of the gameplay and the force powers and all that stuff that you could do in that game, like, which is crazy. It was huge. I wish I had it on the computer on the PC because there was a huge modding scene behind it. And um, there was a lot of stuff that was added to that game. I still haven't played either one, but they're in the clay. I got you. Got them in the backlog. Shining Force games are pretty fun. Yeah, Shining Force games, like I, I always heard a lot of good things about it. I just didn't have the console to play it. Let's see, I'm playing through Jedi Fallen Order, and it's definitely giving me Dark Souls vibes. Oh, okay. And like I said, it's always nice to get more Star Wars lore, especially since this lore is considered canon. Um, as you know, the Force Unleashed games at the time they came out, they were considered canon, but then they were quickly retconned. Um, when LucasArts made the move to Disney. So that's unfortunate because Starkiller is a really cool character. And that being said, I don't know of any of the new canon lore that actually gets in the way of that, you know? So 
who knows, like maybe, you know, Star Killer will show up at some point or maybe in a in a slightly different form or fashion um, in the future. So let's see, moving on, the rest of these games I got are PlayStation 4 games. Like I said, I've been going hard. I picked up like 15 PlayStation 4 games. I won't show them all today, but ugh, we will show them here in the future. This one is one I've been wanting to pick up. It's a nice little Neo classic by Natsume. And of course, I'm talking about Wild Guns Reloaded. Um, and this one, again, is one that I was just kind of waiting to get cheap, but then it got to the point where I stopped seeing it on store shelves. So when I saw it uh, earlier this week and saw it for $19.99, I was like, yeah, let me just go ahead and buy this now and get it out of the way. Uh, it's a caravan shooter, so it's kind of, you know, like you're standing in the in the foreground and you sh you just stand basically and shoot everything in the background that pops up and whatnot. And uh, like I said, it's a remake of the version on the Super Nintendo, which uh, complete in box on the Super Nintendo, Wild Guns is like a thousand bucks. So uh, uh, yeah, if I can get the definitive version of that game for $20, I'll take that all day. So let's see. What universe do the KOTOR games exist in? Unfortunately, they are, in, are currently in the Legends canon. Uh, that being said, it, it's Legend, um, but none of the new lore uh, retcons anything in the Knights of the Old Republic game. So technically, everything in the KOTOR universe can be canon. In fact, uh, Dave Filoni, he's the uh, director behind Star Wars, the Clone Wars that came out on, the, on uh, Cartoon Network those years back and um, also Star Wars Rebels. And people gave him a lot of crap too, but he canonized a lot of stuff, you know, from Legends continuity. Um, like for instance, at, you know, bringing Darth Bane into the series uh, at the end of, you know, the Clone Wars, like that's fantastic because now he, you know, he canonized the fact that Darth Bane was the, the, the creator of the rule of two Sith and all of that. And, so yeah, like he basically made all of that stuff a part of the official canon, which is cool. Like he did that with a lot of stuff, even um, in uh, Knights in um, Star Wars Rebels, where they go to Malachor Five. Uh, that's from the Kotor universe. Uh, the Dark Saber. Uh, that's from the Kotor universe and a lot of stuff like that. So he canonized a lot of it. So technically the KOTOR universe is still legends, but a lot of aspects from the KOTOR universe have made it into official canon. And for the most part, the official canon does not retcon uh, any of the KOTOR stuff. So technically all of that can be accepted uh, without any issue. The backdrop is clean. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's uh, that's what I like about shooting at this uh, this low aperture, the 1.8. You can't really see how messy it is because it's all blurred out. And I got the camera just high enough to where you can't see all the crap. You know what I'm saying? If I move out the way, you know what I'm saying? I got the chairs and the, the, the this thing like all, you know what I'm saying? So trying to keep it all out the way. Am I a fan of Star Trek? Not. I'm not as much in the Star Trek as I am in the Star Wars. I love Star Trek The Next Generation. Like, everything Next Generation I'm a huge fan of, but for the most part, uh, I don't know a whole lot about Star Trek, uh, especially in comparison to Star Wars. Uh, let's see. Don't necessarily have a ton of trust in Ubisoft, but... I'm very interested in seeing how their new Star Wars game will turn out. Yeah, I'm always here for a new Star Wars game. So, uh, yeah, they, they just got to keep them coming. So I'll definitely keep supporting Star Wars games so they can keep making them. But, man, like I said, I if I just got a Jedi Knight. But the problem, I will say, the problem with Jedi Knight, the Jedi Knight series, is that it's definitely Legends canon. Most of it got retconned by the new continuity. So characters like Kyle Katarn don't even really exist in the uh, in the official canon. So that's probably one of the main reasons why we haven't gotten a new Jedi Knight game because it takes place. Those games take place like ten years after the Battle of Yavin, where Luke Skywalker reestablishes the Jedi Order, and he's got his new band of Jedi Knights and Masters like Kip Durin and Corrin Horn and Kyle Katarn and all of them. All of them no longer exist. Uh, Jaden and Jason Solo, the twins who I think they got the idea for Ben Solo and uh, and uh, Ray. So they are basically like the Jaina and Jason Solo 
of you know this new this new uh star wars continuity but you know those are the solo twins who are now definitely retconned out of the picture um luke skywalker actually has a son named ben skywalker and for them to name kylo ren ben solo that doesn't make any sense because like none of them knew really knew obi-wan kenobi as ben like Luke Skywalker did. Luke Skywalker grew up around Ben Kenobi on Tatooine, so it would make sense for him to name his son Ben uh, Ben Skywalker. But and the the new continuity, how they name him Ben Solo, that doesn't make any sense. Like Princess Leia never met Obi Wan Kenobi in person, you know, and Han Solo only knew him for those few weeks or whatever the case until the Death Star blew up or until the uh, the Death Star blew up Alderaan and, you know, Obi-Wan was killed and all of that. So he and during that whole time, he basically spent the whole time mocking the, you know, the religion surrounding the force and all of that. So he didn't have any kind of attachment to Obi-Wan. So it makes no sense that they would name their kid Ben Solo. Like, it just doesn't make sense at all. So but anyway. Let's see. Am I focused on trophies? Not too much. Not too much. If it's a game I really like, I'll try to unlock everything in it just because uh, and maybe like just to get more replay value, then I'll start trophy hunting just for the fun of it. But for the most part, I don't really care about that. I was much more into collecting achievements on the Xbox 360 and where achievements were better than the trophies was in the fact that they put, you know, they gave it numerical value. So it was kind of like having a high score in an arcade game. It was a tangible number that you can show off to your friends of how good you actually are. So I don't really achievement hunt either, but I'm definitely more enthusiastic about getting achievements than I am about getting trophies because, you know, on my Xbox one, I've got my my whole career total since the days of the Xbox 360 and what my current gamer score is and all of that. So that was a really cool idea. Um, but yeah, in any, in any, uh, event, I don't really try to like platinum games or like get a thousand gamer score on any game or whatever the case. Uh, let's see. I am sorry. I'm, I got off on a tangent on a star Wars tangent and now I'm missing a bunch of comments here. Let's see. You still haven't played it. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's see. Okay, I'm not too far behind. Professor says I'm playing hardcore games on Game Pass and on Yeah, man, Game Pass is that that yeah, they they really did that with Game Pass. Like they definitely got a leg up. Uh he also says Wild Guns Reloaded is a good joint. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to check that out. Uh Unleashed 2 was booty. Yeah, man, on uh, the Star Wars Unleashed 2 like they could have put that all on the same disc. Like it was definitely more of a DLC gone wild, you know, as opposed to an actual whole game. Uh, let me see. What's the culture of, of GameStop looking like these days? Still haven't been back. I mean, they still be on the same BS. Actually, a couple of, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. A couple of crazy things happened to me at GameStop and let's get into these pickups right now. So, I got a couple of VR games because I've been trying to grab my VR stuff. Uh, Doom 3, which is one of my favorite Doom games uh, since it came out on the original Xbox. Uh, and then they got they came out with the remaster, like the BFG edition, which I never got a hold of, but always wanted to grab, but just didn't get a chance to. Doom 3 was recently released in VR. And so, what's up? You want me to try this? Okay, but I got to try it live, though. Okay, I'm fine. All right. Sorry, guys. My girlfriend has me something. To oh, is that a cannoli? What? Oh, wait, what? what is, wait, what do you call them? This is, oh, why does it look? Oh, okay. Cause it's burnt like this. It look, okay. I fried it. You fried it. Okay. Sorry. I, I got a little excited. Okay. So guys, this is, they call this tofu and that's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty good. You yeah, gonna see? Just... Okay. Sweet. You gonna sneak this in my dinner tonight? Mm -hmm. All right. Bet. Bet. I mean, yeah, this is good. I'm excited. So I don't know what she's cooking. It smells good, yo. And this tofu stuff is very interesting. She said I'm being weird about it. I'm being a little weird. My bad. My bad, <clears throat> girl. You know I'll be doing too much. That's my whole shtick, okay? 
Oh, it says my mic is randomly peaking. Let me, my gain is probably a little up there. Oh, yeah, my gain is way up there. Let me turn that down. Whoopsie. Yeah, it's probably peaking when I'm leaning in. So hopefully it's sounding better. Now, let's see. But, yeah, the culture of GameStop. Okay, so I'm going to follow this. So anyway, so I bought Doom 3 VR edition. It hasn't been out very long, only like a month or so. So there were no new copies or there were no used copies, but I did get a new copy. But, whoa, you okay? Everything all right? All right I was a loud, sorry, I heard a loud crash upstairs. But anyway, so Doom 3 VR, but you'll notice this bad boy is sealed. So Microsoft, uh, Microsoft GameStop does this dumb thing where they take games that they get new and they open them up and put a little sticker on them or whatever and say they're new and then basically sell you an open game for new price. But I was surprised that I bought this new game at GameStop and it was actually factory sealed. So that's pretty crazy coming from GameStop. Not only was that factory sealed, but I also got Wolfenstein Cyberbot. For like $10, brand new, and it's also factory sealed. So that's crazy. Again, uh, the Doom game was $19.99 new. So I'm like, ah, eh, that's $20. Bucks. I'll go ahead and buy it new since I can't find a used copy. And same thing with Cyberbot. It was $10. So I was like, eh, that's cool. I'll just buy it new, whatever. But they were both factory sealed. I was super surprised because they GameStop does not do that. Um, let's see. Professor says, boy, boy, I got to start back hitting GameStop for those PS4 and Xbox sales about to... Yeah, man, I am I guarantee you this, this summer, man, Xbox is going crazy with the eighth generation stuff. Guarantee it. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to flesh out. I'm going to gr- make sure I grab all the exclusives for the Xbox One. And, um, yeah, everything I want to get on PS4, I'm definitely going to try to grab this summer because... Again, by this time next year, I really feel like the uh, PS4 stuff is going to start going up. Seems like he was too close. Yeah, I think I was too close to the mic. Let's see. It's a wall of Funko Pops at GameStop these days. Yeah, man, that's true. And going to GameStop, honestly, it depends. Most of the GameStops in my area, like there's no actual games in there. It's crazy. Like the walls are so bare. They'll sell a bunch of they they sell like a bunch of swag now. Like they got a bunch of like you you can you can you can't get the latest game on PS5, but you can definitely get a wallet with the Triforce symbol on it. <laughs> you can definitely get that at GameStop. So yeah, there's just a bunch of it's like it's like hot topic for video games. And <laughs> when I walk into GameStop now, like it's weird. There's very very few games. Um, like I said, the seventh generation stuff will be all gone by the end of this year. Uh, I only see ever see like maybe a handful of games like on a little small little shelf for Xbox 360, PS3, Wii, and Wii U. So they, I don't even know if they're accepting those games anymore. But uh, yeah, so that's about to dry up super fast. But yeah, they just don't be having no games in there. That being said, they're as far as the retro stores go. Uh, I don't see as much PS4 stuff in the retro stores yet. So really with PS4 stuff like GameStop is my best bet if we're talking brick and mortar. Um, Every now and then like Walmart will randomly like uh, blow out like a bunch of games and stuff like that. So you can get new sealed games at Walmart for super cheap. I see them do that with 3DS games uh, every now and then. And so that's cool. I don't collect. I used to own a 3DS. I sold it. what is your pet peeves when it comes to collecting? Yeah, 360 was dope. 360 was dope. I, I like the 360 more than the PS3, honestly, uh, when it comes to 7th generation. I, during during the actual 7th generation, I was all in on the Xbox 360. I eventually got my PS3 later on, and I loved it as well. But yeah, man, that Xbox 360, I was all in on that joint. Let's see. Video game, okay, boy, boy, letting uh, the professor know that's a good way to go about it. Take advantage of themselves, my boy, absolutely. And they're definitely, you know, the, the professor, man, he lets y'all know, man, when they're whenever they're blowing stuff out for the the four for ten, the four for twenty, man, you got to get on that. I've got so much stuff listening to 
to Professor Joe Casey when and whenever he puts me on when he's like, hey, I just got this for the four for ten, the four for two. I go to GameStop that day. And I've got a lot of stuff based on his recommendations. So again, if you guys haven't checked out his channel, definitely do that. You see him there in the chat, video game gaming with the professor. Um, I'm sorry to hear about your, your MacBook, though. That sucks. So that's going to slow you down. But not really, because you're still going to be out there getting it in. Let's see. I know it's probably an unpopular opinion, but I hate to see GameStop close all their physical stores completely. Yeah, honestly, it's, I don't like GameStop as a company, but we need to have brick and mortar stores when it comes to video games. Like we just, we just got to have it. And honestly, if people are some weirdos out there really like preying on GameStop's downfall, but if GameStop disappeared tomorrow, the problem with that is there's nobody to fill the void that GameStop will leave behind. And because of that, people will, and these video game companies will start to think, well, if the major, you know, the only major brick and mortar store for video games has collapsed and there's no need for physical games, and that's going to spell the end of physical media as we know it moving forward. So, uh, yeah, places like stores like GameStop are super important. We saw that here in America where when EB Games went under. And I think there's still some, some EB Games here in America or in North America somewhere, but... In my neck of the woods, when uh, EB Games disappeared overnight, they all became GameStop stores. Like GameStop at the time was big enough to fill the void left by EB Games uh, here in North America. So if that were to happen, uh, you know, smaller companies like Game Exchange or Vintage Stock, I don't think that they're big enough to fill the void left behind by GameStop. So the only place you'd be able to go is like the major retail chains like Walmart and Best Buy and all of that stuff. And who really wants to do that? not me. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely down with GameStop being around. I think they're shifting their focus away from video games too much. Uh, like wave said, there's just walls of Funko pops. And now I do now I, I have seen that they're pivoting more towards content creation and, and, uh, streaming. So you can like get like little ring lights there and little desktop setups, you know, so you can get your PC going for live streaming. I think that's cool. Like I I'm fine with them selling that type of gear, because I think it applies, but like, what do Funko Pops really got to do um, with GameStop? That's just for like wannabes to say, "Oh, I'm such a, I'm such a nerd. I'm such a geek. I got a, I got a Funko Pop that looks like Michonne from The Walking Dead. Oh my God, I'm such a geek. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, not to be a gatekeeper, but you, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, let's see. When I worked at GameStop, we only ever opened a, one copy for display. Yeah, man, back in the day. That's the way it used to be. But for a while, like, they just be. I told y'all what happened to me on my birthday, like in December, right? Like, uh, so me and my girlfriend, we were watching uh, My Hero Academia, like watching it heavy at the time. Like, we were going hard for it, so hard, in fact, that I was looking for other ways to soak up My Hero Academia. So, uh, they had a uh, the the fighting game, the Heroes Justice Two or whatever it's called. Um, so we went to GameStop to go get that. On my shoes, says she would buy it for my birthday. So I'm like, bet. So we go up to GameStop uh, down the street in our local mall, and you know they were doing this thing where they'll have the game there, the display case, and then they'll say, oh, it's this price new and it's this price used. Had both the prices there. So I'm like, hey, can we get the used copy of this? And she's like, oh, well, we don't have the used copy, but we have it new. And they always say that, by the way. So just FYI, it's very hard to get used games at GameStops these days because they always say that, oh, we don't have it used, but you can spend like five bucks more or 10 bucks more and get it new type of deal. You know, I think just to coax you into buying it new and spending more money. But anyway, so my girl, she was like, it's your birthday. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Fine. Let us get the new version. They didn't know where the case was because they opened their stuff up and separate the game from the case. So they gave us the disc and put it in a black generic case and was like, that'll be $42. <laughs> and I said, what? I was like, I, I was like, this is not a new. She's like, it's a, it's a new disc. It's never been used. I'm like, that's not a new game. <laughs> like, I can't resell this for new if it's a disc in a generic ass case, like get out of here. So needless to say, we did not buy that. And uh, we promptly left, but yeah, so they were doing that where again, that's why it was so weird to get games from GameStop 
and them actually be factory sealed. So that was, I was impressed by that. I'm sure that that was probably more of an anomaly and that you still going to get a, a used copy if you buy a new game at GameStop. But like I said, in the case of Doom, since it had just come out, and it was only 20 bucks. I was like, cool. And then this Wolfenstein game has been out for a while and it was only $9.99. So I was like, ah, that's cool. I'll take that too. So that's why I went ahead and did it. Check out your Yeti mic, ADJ. <laughs> yeah, what's up, Mr. Bozo Calvin? Like, what's going on, Calvin? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. I didn't see you there for a second, but I'm glad you're here. I'm trying to get the LEDs popping like you got in your room. All I need is some anime posters. I got actually I got my my uh cowboy bebop poster, but it's in the other room. I don't have it posted up in here. Uh yeah, hippie gold, what's going on, my man? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Juan Francisco. It's in the house serious talk. When are we getting a siphon filter remaster collection? Man, siphon filter was such a good series. It got overshadowed by, you know, Metal Gear Solid. But at the time, when Metal Gear Solid came out, there was a lot of games that came out during that time that was trying to cash in on the Metal Gear formula. And there were a lot of clones and a lot of fakers and wannabes, but I think Siphon Filter did it better than anyone else. And Siphon Filter, you know, like, was a fantastic third-person action-adventure game. Now, the first game, it had that, The it was the... uh I think it was like the third area you go to is Ro uh, Romer's base. And that was basically just like being on the outside of Shadow Moses. It was out in the snow and the enemies were dressed the same in all the white, you know, combat gear and stuff. And you're in your little like white combat gear and you have to stealthily sneak around. Um, and you couldn't walk up behind people and you couldn't knock on walls and you couldn't uh, walk up and snap people's necks. But what you could do is headshot everybody. And so that was cool. You could shoot out lights, which was fantastic. You can use uh, other methods like using gas grenades, which were silent and highly effective. So, um, you you know, you have the slow uh, stri uh, strafing action that you can do in that game and you could crouch and you could roll and do things like that. So playing that game in a stealth setting uh, was actually really cool. Um, Siphon Filter 2, when it came out, I think they went a little overboard with the stealth missions and plus... It was those annoying type of stealth missions where the, the 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 game was over as soon as you were spotted type of thing. So that was dumb. But yeah, Siphon Filter was a fantastic series. Uh, when it started to get new life on the, the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation Portable, I was super hyped for that when we got a uh, Dark Mirror and Logan Shadow. And I was like, oh, awesome. Like you got to play this game again because uh, Omega Strain had come out for the PS2. And that one was kind of weird. It's not a terrible game, but it definitely is the weakest in the series. Um, but they got back in the form with the, the two latter games. I'm like, okay, so we definitely, you know, they're going to give us that Siphon Filter 4 next and all that. And we were going to get back into it. And no, it just disappeared. So Gabe Logan has been missing in action for like, 10, 15 years now, but we definitely need that remaster because remaster will get people hype enough that they'll make a new game. That's what I'm hoping for. I would love to see a remaster, all of them on one Blu-ray. You know what I mean? So all downloadable content or collections, now they're uh, coming out with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Fall Guys and House of the Dead remake coming soon for the Switch. Uh, that That's exciting. I don't have a Switch though, so... Well, let's see. That's love, bro. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Like, you, yeah, you, I recommend your channel highly because you got fantastic content and you cover a lot of things better than I do. Like I said, I, I think, you know what I'm saying? I think I got a, a VR collection. I think I'm into the VR, but no, like the professor is into VR. You know what I mean? Like, I think, you know, I got some, I got some PlayStation Vita games, you know what I'm saying? That's cute, you know, but you, you got like a hundred Vita games and you got, you know, hundreds and hundreds of like, you already got like something like a hundred and, and I liked your philosophy, how you were talking about you were collecting for the PS4 before you bought the PS4. So by the time you actually got the console, you had already had a slew of games. And that's a great, that is a great, uh, that's a great piece of advice. Not to necessarily don't wait until you get the console to get the games. If it's a console, you know, you're going to be into, you know, and that, so I'm going to take that to heart. If I see some PS5 games go on sale and go for the cheap, 
before I buy a PS5, I'm going to go ahead and grab them. So when I buy my PS5 console, I'm already going to have the games. And Joe Casey was talking about how he did that with the PS4. So by the time he actually got his console, he already had over 100 PS4 games. So that that was impressive. So these resellers who, yes, the resellers who want GameStop to fall off, absolutely. They will absolutely make a killing if GameStop disappeared overnight. Yeah, man, it, it would be bad. Like, it would be bad for real. Um, let's see. I mean, I have a wall of office Funko Pops. <laughs> The selection in my game stop is trash. Yeah, most of yeah, that, that's what the most of the game stops. There's one in my town that's out. It's on the other side of town, and no one ever goes to it. I guess, but they their shelves are pretty stocked. Where I got these two games, and I got some more PS4 games. Also, um, it was in a nearby city in a uh, Derby, Kansas, which is a good like 15 minutes uh, outside of Wichita. So it's just a quick drive south. And uh, there's a GameStop in there that had a really good selection. I haven't been there in a while. Um, yeah, at J Chip uh, show, they even asked me why my phone models is advertised. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they are taking a. They be taking phones and everything else. They sell gutted as new. <laughs> Absolutely. Bozo says you skipped my comments. Did I skip your comments? Now I got to look for them. No, I didn't. I read that. Okay, if I did, I don't see what I skipped. Maybe I just, I, I've been reading these out of order, just FYI. So I'm kind of going up and down like a weirdo. So that's probably my dyslexia doing that to me. I just wanted to stop by and say hi, TSM Aiden. Welcome to the stream. If you're still here, glad you stopped by. Appreciate you being around. If I had 100 games before PS4, I would be busy for three years, man. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. Like the backlog would be crazy, but it's, and that's the, that's the sucky part. Cause it's like all these games, you know, buying them, it's all on a time limit. Like these games aren't going to be around forever. They're not going to be around for $10 forever. So it's like, even if it's, and that's why the backlog forms, right? Like I'll buy games like, man, I don't want, I don't need to play this right now, but if I don't get it now, it's going to be gone later. That's what my mind is saying. And it's happened so many times, you know, that it's true. Like there's some, some of these games, like I got recently, I got them right before they shot up in price. Um, I can't think of it, but like a time and eternity, I, I reviewed that recently. I just got that, I think. And so I bought that like right before it shot up in price. Uh, I got the uh, the Simpsons game. The Simpsons game, uh, the seventh gen version is expensive now. I bought that like two months ago for like 20 bucks, 25 bucks. I bought that right before it shot up in price. And so that's why I haven't played it yet. But it's like, man, I saw the Simpsons game and I got to thinking about Futurama. I'm like, man, this is going to shoot up like Futurama. The um, the Family Guy game, Back to the Multiverse, I guarantee you that one's going to shoot up just like Futurama. So I went and bought that game. Actually, I got uh, the Family Guy game some, some time back where I got the Xbox 360 lot. I made a video over it. Um, so that was nice to have that in there. But the Simpsons game, I bought that literally weeks before it shot up to like, now it's like 60 bucks now. So, and, you know, disappeared from store shelves. So, like, that's that's, what you, that's how you got to do it. It's like, I got the backlog. I don't want my backlog to get so crazy that I don't think that I can play them all. Because that is the ultimate goal of your collection, to play every game you own. Uh, right now, I probably got about 170 to 200 games in the backlog, so I don't think that's terrible. I think that is something if I'm gaming a lot, I can catch up and play them all. But yeah, man, it, yeah, backlog is crazy. Yep, Harpy Go or yeah, Happy Ghost is backlog is crazy, but you gotta have it. That's absolutely true. The backlog is the best part of having a game collection. You'll never be bored. And that's true. Whenever I get to itch to play something new and I want to go to uh, pick up some games, but I'm broke, then I'll just go to the shelf and be like, man, like, uh, you know, what, what, what's uh, something I haven't played? And then that's a new game because it's new to me. So uh, let's see. What else am I missing? What anime have I been watching lately? Um, 
I haven't been watching a whole lot of anime lately. Uh, I've been going through Hunter Hunter, of course. Uh, Promise Neverland season two is out. I haven't got around to watching that yet because I'm waiting for my girl to have some free time because we watched, we binge watched the first season like in one day. So we binge watched that together. So when we get a day, we'll sit down and watch that. I heard it's not as good, but I still got to, still got to check it out. Uh, Beast Stars is back with season two. I, I like me some Beast Stars. That's a crazy, crazy it's a crazy show but b stars is actually pretty good um although i think that one might i don't know if that one's a western made one or not but i'm watching b stars a uh, yasuke is out on netflix so i definitely gotta check that one out when i get time and so so those are what's on my list in the near future um my hero academia i know they came back recently but i'm waiting for uh them to just like finish some more seasons and then i'll go back to that and binge watch that um let's see Says you're spot on. It looks like something you might be interested in. You see it for cheap. Might as well go ahead and grab it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I got a, what is this game I got recently here? I don't know where I put it out. It might be on the shelf. Might not be. I don't even remember the name of it, but yeah, I don't know where I put it. It's a, like a little racing game. Oh, here it is. It was in my second. It was in my second pile of games that I'm going to show off uh, later this week. But this game here, this is was it Ch Choro Q? It mixes like a racing game and an uh, an RPG. But if you notice there, it says Atlas, and this game was twelve ninety nine. So I'm like, I don't know anything about this game, but it's Atlas. You see Atlas, you buy Atlas because that's just one that slipped through the cracks, but. One of these days, that might be super expensive. And then if I want to try it then, you know, because like I said, it may not be that great a game, but for $12.99, uh, I feel like I'll probably get $12.99 out of it. But if it gets up to $70, $80, bucks, then no. That's like a, that Xbox 360 game, that Retribution Ride to Hell or whatever it is, that biker game that's notoriously terrible. I just found that complete uh, in my local retro store for $8.99. So $8.99, I'll go ahead and buy it and add it to the collection just because I'm curious about it. But I guarantee you that game gets super expensive in the future. And when it gets super expensive in the future, like, why would you spend $100 or more for a game that's a huge buggy mess other than the fact that, you know, just for bragging rights, you know, to flex, to have in your collection. But, like, no, nah, I don't want to spend the money on that. Simpsons got expensive because EA... Yep. CTSM says I'm starting to set up my room as a gaming theme, so it looks cool right now, but I'm about to get more things for it. Yeah, man, like I said, just get it all a little bit by little bit. I didn't get all this crap overnight. It definitely took a long time, and I'm still not happy with it, so I'm still going to be moving some things around. This table drives me nuts. It looks great. It's a nice big white table, and you got to have that for YouTube, right? You got to have like your white table. It's great for product reviews, and I do a top-down photography on it. I've, I've used it for some thumbnails already, and it's great for that. But, man, it wobbles like crazy. I got it for super cheap off Facebook Marketplace, so I wasn't complaining. But I don't know how I can, like, bolt down the, the legs more so they don't move around. Worst case scenario, though, I could keep the top of this and get, like, uh, some – sit stand legs from Ikea and there's bolt this to those legs. And then I can turn this into a, you know, sit stand desk, like the black one I used to have the black sit stand desk. I put upstairs, uh, in my room. So I was going to turn that into a little area to make content from, but I haven't got around to doing it yet. Uh, but that's in the future for that. So I've been slowly putting some things in there. I got my old school ring light that I was using until I got this new light. So I'll put that up there maybe, or maybe I'll put it in this room because I'm also going to turn this room into a space. Uh, where I do more of like my photography, like camera gear stuff, probably doing that next room. So, yep. So it's always, it's always a work in progress, but it's your game room, your office, any kind of workspace or play space. So like I said, just get a little by little. I really wish I had Futurama. I do too. But again, I only heard that the game was only okay. So I'm not going to spend the money for it. If I find it cheap, then yeah, I'll go ahead and cop it. But yeah, I'm not spending expensive. I'm not paying a high price for a game that's not good. You know, 
so I still love playing the Simpsons Road Rage uh, for the PS2. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that is uh, Road Rage is actually still cheap, but it's the other one that shot up in price. <clears throat> and I have them both. I, I luckily got them both with what was the other one called? It's called Hit and Run. Yeah. So Road Rage is still like a ten dollar playstation 2 game but hit and run is shot back up to 50 bucks so hit and run is expensive again uh so glad that i scooped that up said i ain't watched tv in two years this youtube gaming and work for me yeah man and like i said i haven't like watched like cable television since i have no clue it's been so long but yeah i literally most of the time i watch i'm watching youtube and, you know, I'll watch Hulu or Netflix to grab my anime stuff or Crunchyroll. But, yeah, it's mostly just YouTube. It's all I watch. J-Chip says, uh, Beastars is a really good anime. The CGI is so good. I thought it was 2D. If you like romantic comedies, I suggest Toradora. I haven't heard of Toradora. I'll check it out, though. Toro Q looks interesting. It is, Yeah, it does look interesting. There's a There's another game that's like it. But it's with tanks. I think it's Seek and Destroy is the name of it. It's one of those games. It's not very expensive either. I, I don't think Atlas made it, but you play as a tank, but you're the tank. Like you're not an operator of the tank. You're the actual machine. And you it's kind of semi-open world. You'll drive through towns and forests and stuff. And this action RPG plays out like that. I want to grab that one too. Uh, Metal Jesus had talked about it some years back, and I can't rightly remember the name of it, so I'll have to go back through his PS2 Hidden Gems, I think, and figure that out, because that is one that I, I think it was on the Hidden Gems one, but that's definitely a game I want to grab. Um, let's see, can PS2 play different regions? Nah, uh, PlayStation 2 is not region-free. The PlayStation 3 is region-free, though. So if you get you a fat... If you get, because I believe if you get a fat uh, PS3, the uh, a backward, a fully backwards compatible one, like a Japanese one, I think that those will play Japanese and American games. So, and the thing about that is, like, like my my PS3 is region free, so I can play Japanese and American games too. But I think the Japanese ones play PlayStation One and Two games. It, it'll play the imports from those too. So. Um, you know, and I, I hear that you can easily chip the uh, the fat PlayStation 2s and make them region free. I haven't looked into it much, but I think it's like something that goes into the memory card slot or something. There's some method that's actually relatively easy uh, to play imports. I haven't gotten around to it yet because it's just like, man, imports like I'm so far. I'm trying to get the American stuff as it is. Like, don't throw imports. There are some imports that I'm on the lookout for a couple on the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4. So, um, but yeah, it, it's tough. Let's see. Yeah, J Chip says, unfortunately, no. I wish. Man, I wish. Uh, my game room is like a man cave. Just ask Lightsaber Samurai. He'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah. The game. Yeah. His game room is nice. It looks like the way you got to set up. Cause uh, so Bozo the Calvin Jr. He collects uh, um, arcades. So he collects the one up arcades. And so he basically has all of them. He's got them in this room. So he's basically turned this room into an arcade. And that's the, the vibe you get when it's in there. It's like the dark, like dark blue, like LEDs and reds flash. And it's almost like back in the day, like if you went to like Pizza Hut or whatever for your birthday and they got the game room in the back, or if you went to Aladdin's castle here or something like that in the mall back in the day. So it's very much that type of vibe in his room, which is nice. Uh, Justin plays. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, Justin plays. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Wave says my desk is a piece of plywood on two filing cabinets. Absolutely, man. Yeah. The, the filing cabinet method. I've seen a lot of YouTubers do that. Um, or what they'll do is they'll get like a nice, like marble, like countertop. Cause you can go to Ikea and just buy the countertop and then they just boom, set them on the two filing cabinets, which is nice. Cause then you got the filing cabinets to put all your stuff in. And you got the nice big like flat surface. So that is definitely a way to do it. And that's a really uh, cool thing to set up if you uh, if you get some good stuff for it. And your setup is really nice. Uh, my game room is essentially a storage closet right now. Yep. Are you a fan of the Just Cause games? Uh, I was a I was a huge fan. I really liked uh, Just Cause 2. And I 
got Just Cause 3 and I haven't played it yet. I haven't bought Just Cause 4. So I was really enthusiastic about those games at first. And it, uh, that since died out for me. So, um, yeah, I like the Just Cause games, but I just haven't got around to playing them in a long time. But Just Cause, I mean, they had super huge worlds. Like, the the graphics on it and the detail of, the, like, the jungle and stuff, like, in, even in the first game, like, the first game, because um, I the first time I bought Just Cause, I bought Just Cause 1 on the original Xbox. And then when I got the 360 version, it was blew my mind how different the versions were and how how nice the game looked how big it was and uh just the freedom like i, I really love like flying around and just up through the clouds and stuff and so uh yeah it, it was just a fun game to explore uh let's see you get the test model or it's modded okay so it's the uh so it's the the fat ps3 test so if you get the test version of the ps3 then you got you can play imports from playstation 1 2 and 3 which is awesome that you know that literally unlocks like six consoles you know worth of video games for you to play in one unit which is insane that is insane let's see bozo says that easy game and says that's how i started as a storage a year ago i have a man cave just about completed Say so, yeah, you get the test model or is modded. Okay. Do you see MGR's most recent video? The one that didn't receive too well because of people attitude toward the subject they were talking about? No, what what were they talking about? Just cause was on the original Xbox. Yep, just cause was on the original Xbox. It was also on the PlayStation 2. They were late titles for both systems, but yep, there is an Xbox and a PlayStation 2 version of Just Cause. The PlayStation 2 version is pretty atrocious. The original Xbox version is actually okay, uh, and I really enjoy playing the OG Xbox version, but when I got the 360 version, which I don't think I have anymore, I think I ended up trading it off at some point and just never added it back to the collection, but I might as well. I, I do think I, that's a series that I want to have all the games in. Um I just need the test, my homie. Get multiple hella. Yeah, man. If you can, and they're not crazy expensive. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think you can get a test console for like three, four hundred bucks, maybe five hundred bucks. But again, that's five hundred dollars. But that's six consoles, my dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's six libraries worth of games wrapped up into one unit. And the test units were built. Uh, they tend to be built better from what I understand because it was the units that they gave to um, video game companies to develop their games on and things like that. So uh, I hear that they're built better uh, than the consumer versions that we got. So I don't know if that's true or not, but how do I feel about the Wii U? I really like the Wii U. That's part of the reason why I haven't bought a Switch yet because all the games that I wanted on the Switch, uh, like whether it be Mario Kart or Smash Brothers or Breath of the Wild or whatever, they were all on the Wii U. And then for all the other games, most of those had a PlayStation 4 version. So I felt like between the Wii U and the PlayStation 4, I wasn't missing out on anything with the Switch. What I miss, I missed uh, Mario Odyssey, I think, like. Okay, like so I miss Mario Odyssey, but I'm sure it was a great game. I'm sure the game wasn't trash, but you know, like you know, you know I'm, there's a ton of great games I've missed, I'm sure. So uh, I really do like the Wii U, and I like the online experience on the Wii U uh, as far as like their virtual shop, uh, the eShop and all of that. From what I hear, that's pretty janky on the Switch. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I enjoy my Wii U a lot. Uh, let's see. The question asked was about getting industry about the about gaming industry drama, but actually the drama they were talking about was business not doing right by the customer. I don't see the problem in that. So his business is not doing right by the customer. I mean, what's how do they get backlash for that? Like the gaming industry has been trash, guys. So dinner's ready and it looks fantastic. I'm about to show this off. So. Oh, and I get the chopsticks. All right, check this out. So, boom. I don't know how well y'all can see that. But, oh, is this the asparagus you was talking about? I'm about to try it. About to do it live. Don't use the end first. Huh? You. What? Eat the top first. You eat the top first? Yeah, because the end, I don't know if I cut off enough. Oh, okay. Sometimes the ends are a little tough. Oh. What is this sauce right now? I can tell. It's delicious. Thank you, my dear. 
Look at this, y'all. I got and this tofu is like crispy chicken nuggets, but better. Mm, that's delicious. So, excuse me, because for the rest of this uh, stream, I'm definitely going to be eating. Uh, I need to get a napkin or something, though. That's a little saucy. It sounds like a meat problem, so I can't clap my hands twice and have you bring me a napkin. <laughs> you can't hear me. Oh, all right. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let me go grab a napkin real quick. I'll be right back. Hold on. Let me catch up on these real fast. Hold on. Actually, let me go grab that, and then we'll, we'll catch up. We'll catch up, catch up. Excuse me, Kona. Kona, don't eat my food, bro. Groovy. Sorry about that, guys. We're back. We're back. Okay, let me catch up on some of these comments. And I got like three more games. Yeah, man, spoiled by dinner. The dinner is fire. And we've been trying to eat healthy. We were eating out a lot lately. And like our diets have been garbage. So. So, okay, I went to the store and bought a bunch of groceries so she could cook, and then I got some stuff to cook this week. And so we said, okay, we're just going to cook and try to save some money and try to continue to lose weight for the summer coming up so I could have a hot boy summer, okay? So anyway, let me catch up on these here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so again, the question asked was about gaming industry drama, but in but in actuality, the drama they were talking about was businesses not doing right by the customer. And I yeah, that I mean a lot of businesses don't do right by the customer. Look at EA, look at Ubisoft. They put out great games, like I said, but you know, look at Nintendo, put out great games, but they do some shady stuff from time to time, you know. See, oh, lightsaber, I have a new black rug coming in two weeks. Uh, just like inside Dave and Buster's, I got my new black light yesterday. Playing Amazon, man, yeah, dude, I was going hard on Amazon for a while, but I had to chill. So I'm spending too much money. And like I said, I don't work as much during the summer, so I got to make sure that I'm a little frugal with my spending so I don't be asked out out here. I mean, there's summer school and stuff, and then I, yeah, I got some more photography gigs and stuff already lined up, but I'm going to make sure that I'm not blowing all my cash. And I said it sucked last year because we couldn't do some summer school and stuff because of COVID. Luckily, I, you know, I, uh, I um, was eligible for like the PPP loan, I think, and then uh, some unemployment and stuff like that. So I didn't starve to death last summer, which is nice because I actually didn't work that much either. So that I think that attributed to a lot of my YouTube growth last year because I was home and I could focus more on my YouTube because I spent so much time at home. So because I was free to do that, which was very nice. One of these days, I will be free to do YouTube full time, which would be awesome. But 
I don't know. I still, I feel like probably five more years before I get to that point at least. So let's see. A lot of people attitude in the video could basically be boiled down to, I don't really care. I just want my game. I see. I see. And you got to be careful with that because being indifferent like that is just like, I don't know. Like they get enough, you know, when you get to that point as a YouTuber, you get to that highest point, there's always accusations of all this big company is paying you off or that big company is paying you off and da, 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 da. So yeah, if, if it, if you don't sound authentic when you're talking about stuff like that, then that's just going to fuel more uh, fire about that. A lot of people was feeling weird that he had collabed with Destiny FOMO too. And it's just like, I don't know, whatever. Like, I don't know. A lot of people be pressed though. Uh, let's see. Wow. That looks sad. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And it tastes fire too. Getting spoiled by dinner. Absolutely. If Sony told you that they'd be willing to bring back one franchise that hasn't been around in a while, what would you pick? Man. So Siphon Filter is a good contender to that. Cause I love the Siphon Filter series. Um, but if I had to pick one, man, I can only have one. I would probably say the Tenchu series. I love Tenchu. I love the storyline of Tenchu. I love the gameplay. Again, Tenchu was just one of those games that made you feel like you were in the shoes of, you know, what you were playing in. Like that really, you felt like you were a ninja in that. And so Tenchu would definitely be a game that I would love to see return. Like I said, we haven't seen it since 2008's uh, Tenchu Z uh, that I can think of. But again, Tenchu Z suffered from the same issues that Siphon Filter the Omega Strain did, whereas who didn't play as the series protagonist. The series protagonist had moved on to like an administrative role and you were just some newbie rando like out to do his bidding and all of that and forging your own new adventure, which, you know, isn't awful, but like, I don't know. Like I wanted the saga of Ricky Maru and Ayami to continue. So it was just weird, but I should have took a picture of this. So yeah, Tenchu would probably be, uh, probably be my pick. And there are other franchises too. I would love to see a new Fear Effect game. Uh, Dino Crisis definitely needs to come back. Am I a vegan or just enjoying some tofu? No, I'm just enjoying some tofu. Um, like I said, it's all part of my diet because I'm too fat out here. Okay. And she makes really good tofu, too. Like, her tofu be tasting like some real meat out here. So, I'm with that. Ooh, he picked uh, Sly Cooper. That's a good pick. I played myself. That's one of the PlayStation 3 games that I don't own. It's the Sly Cooper collection. And that got expensive like the Ratchet & Clank one did. I think the Jack & Daxter one is still reasonably priced. So I definitely need to get that within the next week or so because that won't be the case very soon. I said, you must have been reading my books if you're out there clapping your hands. <laughs> hey, I do. I am going to buy your book just FYI. I want a physical copy because I like all my stuff physical. But yep, I am going to buy. I'm going to support my guy out there and buy a book because... If we ever meet in real life, I, I'm going to have it on me so you can sign it. So that's my goal. Okay, says I worded that a bit wrong. Some of Metal Jesus Rock's audience pointed out their attitude towards these companies because it seemed like they didn't care based on the answers they gave in the video. I see. And yeah, like I said, that that tone of indifference like that'll have people slinging accusations of all oh, you've been paid off and all oh, you sold out and this and that and yada, yada, yada. So like I said, I don't care. Like I said, I got 1400 subs. I don't care if I had, you know, 1.4 million, I would say Nintendo is trash. I don't like Nintendo. And like I said, I don't necessarily hate everything about Nintendo. They have some good games, but they Nintendo just don't do it for me. Like I said, they be on some weird shady shit and 
you know, a lot of the Twitch, again, like a lot of the, the Nintendo YouTubers and a lot of the Twitch or the Switch YouTubers, they just seem so, just so like fake. Like they just seem really, you know, not authentic, like in their enthusiasm for Nintendo, even if it's just like Nintendo's doing some like super whack shit, then they'll be like defending Nintendo and saying it's all oh, it's not so bad. Like you know it's that bad, bro. Like, come on. So those are people that's make oh, you part of the you, you know, you got that you had that wood hawker hookup where you you know the Nintendo ambassador program and this and that. And then Wood played himself by <laughs> making that video with the mods and stuff. And Nintendo was like, nope. <laughs> so but yeah, yeah, I just don't fool with Nintendo like that. And dude, it's all game preservation. It's all free uh, publicity. Like, why are you cracking down on these like lowly YouTubers like for stuff like that? It's ridiculous. And yeah, it says I have the original trilogy of Sly Cooper on the PS2. And that's another question you guys got to ask yourself. Like, is it really that different? You know what I mean? Do I need to spend $70 on the Sly Cooper trilogy on PS3? Or can I buy each individual game on the PS2 for about 30 bucks? You know what I mean? Ways and Games going to call his mother-in-law and be back. All right. We'll see you in a bit. I, I, I might not be here when you get back. I might wrap this up soon. Of course, I always say that, and then I'll be here for like three hours straight. But how long have we been going? We've been going for an hour and a half. I'm going to try to cut it at two hours, you know? So are they making a new Twisted Metal game? I wish. I wish. If they are, he hasn't heard of it yet. So let me know when you're free, bro. And I'll slide on. You'll make it for a great video. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. I'll let you know. Uh, I will say, though, a lot of these companies and their practices suck. But if people are going to keep buying this BS, then who's to blame? Exactly. I mean, people will only do what you let them get away with. Like, you know, so, I mean, that's the only reason why these people are doing it, because they're allowed to do it. Like, you know. So it's tough. So that's why I don't watch Switch only channels. I can't stand them. Yeah, man, they're ridiculous. Like, like a lot of the Spawn Wave guys, like, are just like Switch tubers. And like I said, it's the Switch is not. It's just not that great. And they don't have like they don't come out with that many games for it. So the Switch YouTubers are all talking about the same like three games at any given time, and it's just like man. Sometimes you can tell when a creator is burnt out on content for a specific company. And that's another thing. Like, man, I know you don't love Nintendo stuff so much that you can only talk about Nintendo. Because there is not enough variety there for me. To, there's not enough variety for me and one, like, developer for me to just talk about that one developer or even that one console or whatever the case. There's too much out there for me to sit there and do that and pretend I like it. Like that's, mm -mm. man, I caught this late. Hey, I'm glad you're here though. Like I said, we'll still be around for a little bit. I got uh, three more games to show. I'm sure we got a lot more ish to talk, but my favorite food, um, that is, I don't know. I think I, I'm really partial to Chinese cuisine. Like I love, I love rice. I love fried rice. I love, uh, like, I, I, you know, I love my uh, my General's chickens and whatnot. Crab ragoons are some of my favorite snacks. Vietnamese egg rolls, a little crunchy like, oh, man. Mm. I got to chill with that, though, because like I said, I got to be watching my health out here. I keep forgetting that I'm old. Let's see. What am I missing out here? What else am I missing? True, you got to vote with your wallet. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when it comes to my wallet, okay. When it comes to my wallet, that's how I'm voting, all right? 
that's how I'm voting when it comes to my wallet. So that's right. Actually, make sure. Okay, make sure that I didn't slip between the couch. I'll be looking for that tomorrow. But uh, yeah, like, let's see. The problem is the casual market. They don't understand any of the extra stuff and just buy the game. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, if if all they're catering to is the casual market, I mean, that's cool. I guess if the ca- the casual market is happy with the way things are. So I mean, you know, I don't know. I, you know, that's why whenever a company decides to give us extra or to do more or to go above and beyond, like we definitely got to support that any chance we get, because that'll put everybody else on notice that, Hey, like, Oh, who knew if you gave people what they asked for and did right by them, that they would treat you well and buy your stuff. Let's see when they get bored, eShop videos become content. That's true. That's true. Either they get super bored or there's nothing going on. And Nintendo said, like, oh, yeah, here's some eShop games you need to take a look at and whatever. And, I mean, that's cool. Like, a lot of those eShop are, like, indie developers and whatnot. And it's cool to give them some shine. But it's like, man, you really don't care about what's going on in eShop. You just ain't got ish else to talk about. And you definitely can't talk about PlayStation or Xbox if you want to stay in the Nintendo Ambassador program. So it's like, yeah, man, like, that's, that's for me, I can't be in a position where I can't make the kind of content I want to make, like not doing it, not doing it. Cause like I said, I play too many games and I like, there's things I like about every company that if I want to talk about that company, I'm going to do it. And I'm not waiting for anybody's permission or approval to do what I want to do on my channel. I go crazy being sponsored by Nintendo. That's facts, man. Like that's, they be getting on you about your mouth all the time. I could already tell. You be getting them emails. Uh, yeah, Professor Joe Casey. Uh, yeah. So you said the B word in your latest video. Kind of need you to tone that down, buddy. I can already tell. They're going to be <laughs> like, yeah, look, man, you can't be talking about pimping and macking when you're talking about Mario Kart, okay? <laughs> oh, man, I already know they're going to try to censor you. Let's see. They don't have the understanding of the industry that the hardcore gamers do, so they miss out on a lot of information. And that's true. And, you know, to their credit, they don't need it. They don't need a lot of that information. For the casual gamer, what's going on in the industry, you know, the stuff, like it's enough for them. And that's fine. And that's fine. It's just sad that we don't get as much catering to us as the quote unquote hardcore gamer community. You know, because people, you know, like if it's enough to just go halfway, then they just, that's what they do. So unfortunate, but said I had to unsubscribe to most of Spawn Wave. They all make the same damn video. Yep. All within like the same day of each other. So Yeah. And that's what I like about the smaller retro video game community. Like we do whatever we want, whenever we want. And, you know, whether it's talking like, a, you know, the spawn wave, like all the crazy stuff that's been going on with PlayStation and Sony in the store, they couldn't talk about none of that. They could tell you what's on the eShop though. These games are $2.99. Insane. So, mm mm-hmm. Like I said, I'm not knocking the hustle. It's just, it's just not for me. So, did I get my hands on a retro tink? I did not. I remember when the, I remember seeing the, the coverage for that. I personally don't hate the Switch, but I just hate. Yeah, their games will stay sixty bucks forever, and then we finally get a price drop. Like, ah, oh, and go to. $49.99 or $44.99 or something like that. It'll drop 10 or 15 bucks after like three years of being on the market. And that's ridiculous. That's another reason, yeah, Switch is expensive to collect for. And again, it's like the same way I feel towards even like PlayStation and Microsoft in that regard because I'm not going to pay more money 
for the especially like multi platform releases like why would i pay freaking 40 dollars or 30 40 dollars or 50 dollars on the switch for a version of doom when i can get the better playing version of it on the xbox one or ps4 for like 20 dollars i'm not gonna do that's not gonna happen that's why I'm telling people like this PlayStation 3 stuff. Yes, these games are going up crazy in price, but the Xbox 360 got many of these games for a fraction of the for a fraction of the cost. And in some cases, you know, I'm a you know, I'm a PlayStation head for sure, but credit where credit's due, the Xbox 360 had the better multiplayer uh ports in the seventh generation. And that's that's simply the truth. The games ran and uh better on the Xbox 360. That being said. Xbox 360's controller is inferior to the DualShock 3, in my opinion, uh, for most types of games. Like first-person shooters, I'm playing them on the 360 all day. I love the triggers for that. I love the off-center joysticks, and I think that that the analog sticks, rather, and, and first-person shooters feel fantastic on the Xbox 360. Um, I might even give them the slight edge in racing games as well, but if it comes to, like, uh, like, 3D platformers, 3D like action games, the hack and slash games, the fighting games. I'm playing all those on the DualShock 3. So I don't know. Uh, let's see. Not being on Nintendo's Mario is starting to at him right behind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he giving me the death stare. Look at him. Like I said, I don't hate Nintendo, but I kind of hate Nintendo is all I'm saying. And see, the eShop is embarrassing. So many indie games are the focus. And they're all like, like, oh, it's like twin stick shooters all day. And they show you this twin stick shooter, a very basic looking platform game. And it's like, no, nah, I'm, I'm good, actually. <laughs> I'm all right. And like I said, I love retro games as much as the next person, but I'm spending all these monies on these new consoles for new experiences. Like I said, I love games. The Neo Classics on the PS4, like Assault Suit Lanos, which I covered recently, Wild Guns Reloaded, all that is fun and good, but I don't want all my collection to be full of like 2D sprite games when I can be playing like the latest VR stuff and all of that. Like, that's what I get the new consoles for, for the most part, you know? So, um, yeah, I don't want to fill myself full of like indie games that are twin stick shooters or like you know, like free roaming, like, I don't know, like, it's just, I don't know, like, those games are too basic for me to be that hype about, uh, for the most part. Let's see, I was all in on the 360 during the seventh generation, absolutely, the set, the, the Xbox 360, it wasn't the more powerful system, the, the cell processor in the PlayStation 3 technically was supposed to be the more powerful hardware, but the simplicity of Microsoft's architecture, like the developers were able to do way more with it and push it and get way more out of it. So I don't know. Says so Switch is a bigger hustle than the, the Dodge coin. Yeah. Like, or the doggy coin, whatever it's called. Yeah, man, they, yeah, Nintendo's getting hella rich off of that. Like, but I don't know, man, they not getting my money, at least not for a little while longer. Everybody wants the new console to play the big new blockbuster game. Yeah, man, I'm trying to see what's up with that next Metal Gear game. Like, I don't care about this twin stick shooter because it changes black and white to color when you shoot something or something crazy like that. Like, I don't care. <laughs> like, I really don't. Uh, you get to do the switch like the 3ds when it comes to collecting for it yeah man like i don't know and people are praising the ds and 3ds and they're they're fair they're fairly good consoles for sure but i'm just like man i think the psp is better than even the 3ds like i think it's the more powerful system it definitely has the better looking games in my opinion as a fantastic library like and compared to the DS, it's not even a comparison. Like, the DS has some good games. The, the 3DS definitely has some good games. But, man, the PSP and the Vita, man, eats the lunch of both of those consoles any day of the week. In my opinion, again, both of those consoles, you can cast them to your TV. And that's huge for me because, I again, I don't play uh, handheld games so much anymore. But I love putting them on the TV and playing them like that. So, like I said, back when I was a kid and I was on the go all the time or in the back of my parents' car while they were running errands or something like 
having the Game Boy Color was vital. Like you had to have that. But but now, no. Yeah, the Switch does have some good games. He, um, yeah, uh, Arms, uh, Astral Chain. Astral Chain looked really cool, actually. See, a game like that will make me get a Switch. The Astral Chain looks fantastic. Heck yeah, with the the Game Boy Color with the worm light. Yes, sir, all day. Let's see. I plan on collecting Switch games after the next Nintendo releases on sales. For example, I saw the first party any Switch games, ten bucks and under, maybe. Join the Switch side lightsaber. Nah, I'm cool on that. <laughs> like I said, like I said, I probably will at some point. I have a box. I have a Switch box. I don't know where I put it. I had a Switch box. I don't know where it went. My uh, my girlfriend's brother, he bought a Switch, so I took his box. I don't know. I had a Switch box. Maybe I don't anymore. <laughs> it was around here somewhere, but I had it. All right, man. Let me wind down on these last few games because we're at an hour and 50 minutes. I'm going to try to cut it off around the two-hour mark because it's 8.30 where I'm at right now. I have school tomorrow, but I definitely want to play some games before I go to bed tonight. So... Here's another PS4 game that I've been looking for for a while and just hadn't got around to buying and decided to grab it, and mainly because it also has a VR mode. That is Wipeout the Omega Collection, and this is one that I don't see on shelves anymore in my neck of the woods, so I wanted to get it because it has um, it has like a remaster version of Wipeout HD, which was uh, digital only, uh, was digital only on the. Uh, PlayStation 3. It also came uh, with Wipeout 2048, which I do also have on the Vita. But again, the Vita version of it, you can't cast it to the TV very well because it utilizes a bunch of the touch functionality. So it doesn't work natively in the PlayStation TV. You got to mod it and all that stuff. I haven't done that yet. So be nice to play those tracks on the big screen. And uh, it's got some exclusive avatars and some exclusive tracks and stuff like that. So it's kind of a best of. But again, the fact that it has the Wipeout HD from PlayStation 3 that didn't drop physically, at least in America, from what I remember, uh, that was enough for me to grab it at that price. Yeah, the Wii, U, the Wii U doesn't have a large collection, but the quality of that collection is very good. Like the ratio, like it's definitely not like the original Wii where there was a ton of games that came out for the Wii, but most of them were garbage. Like the Wii U had very few games in comparison, but most of them was hitters. Like said, I'm an hour behind you, so you must be on the East Coast, right? Maybe uh, on the Eastern Seaboard there. So, yeah, let's see. Gonna hit up some Ghost of Tsushima after this. That's, that's a game I definitely still need to get. I haven't grabbed it yet. But, like I said, those games are going down in price, so I'll have it soon enough. Garrett says, retro games forever. Let's see, I'm feeling, I or I enjoy collecting for the Wii U. Okay, yep, I already answered that for sure. For sure it is. But, as the professor was telling you, a lot of them games is jumping up in price for the Wii U, which is crazy because a lot of them, again, were re-released on Switch, but there were some that never got a re-release. You know, if Devil's Third got re-released for the Switch, the Wii U version wouldn't be as expensive as it is right now. I picked up some... Uh, it's a kart racing game on the Wii U. It's like a Hello Kitty kart racing game. It's this one right here. And I got this a while ago for like $12. And I think this one is expensive now. Uh, I don't know anything about it. I've never played it. It doesn't even look that good. But it's kind of got the the whole Mario Kart thing with like in air, over water, on land type of thing. So and with the chopsticks. Oh, yeah. 
I feel more Asian when I eat with the chopsticks. So yeah. Plus all the anime I've been watching. I'm in my weeb mode right now. Oh, nice background. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, I've been trying to work on it. I shot my last several videos from here, but I think it's time to move things around again. So I'll switch my videos, my background around every few videos just so I don't get bored. But mainly I've kept it in this position because a lot of my gamers, really you can't see it, but it's kind of disorganized and dirty right now. So because it's messy, I can't really move things from this angle. So it's the only angle I've been keeping clean. But just off to my my left here, I got my, my couch here and it's got games and controllers and cords and a bunch of crap laying on it. My PlayStation 4 shelf, and I got PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 4 on that shelf. It's all trashed. But yeah, I do need to clean up down here. I'm going to eat and maybe hop on some Invincible. Yeah, Invincible is dope. The price of retro games needs to drop down. It will eventually, I'm sure. I see the regular NES. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah. let's school NES. Then I got the NES Mini on the top here. I think it's just outside of you. There it is, right there. So, yeah. But I need to figure out some. I don't know. I definitely want to replace all the shelves in here. I was at the back in the day when I was getting started, I was just trying to get shelves just to get shelves. So it didn't really matter what kind of shelf I got, just as long as it can hold some games. But now that I'm more into uh, set design and things like that, I definitely want to go with all white Ikea shelves. So I'll replace these probably, or maybe the next time I move and set up a new game room, uh, I will do that. Let's see. Do I talk to my students about games after class? Nah, I'll try to keep that. Try to keep all that separate. They know I'm a gamer. And some know I got a YouTube channel, but most of them don't know what it is because I don't want all my students in my streams like that. I don't need that messing with my analytics either. Like I said, I literally I just got the uh I just got the email to get monetized. So I'm applying for monetization right now. I definitely don't want to mess that up. So, yep. Yeah. So, so I'm a teacher. Yeah. I'm more like an, a, a co-teacher or in some places they call them Paris, but I teach a uh, sixth grade science. Although I might switch next year, like switch up the grade, switch up the subject. Will I do a game room tour anytime soon? I need to. I really do. I haven't done a game room tour in like three years. And I've had three different game rooms since then. But since I'm finally starting to get this one dialed in, I'll definitely do one in this place this year. And also considering the fact that we may be moving uh, next year. I definitely want to do one to document this space because this space definitely, when I moved here and saw this space, like I knew when I moved here, I said, this, this is where I'm going to take off. Like this space is going to take me to the next level. And so it's really been doing that for me. Um, you know, cause your, your YouTube set is like a whole nother character on your show, you know? And so, yeah, seeing this uh, place evolve over the last three years, especially has been, I've been, putting a lot into this over the last just 2020 alone. Like I added a bunch of stuff in here. So it's been really cool. So definitely want to pay homage and do a game room tour. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of cool game room tours lately. Retro Rivals did a really cool game room tour. Pac-Man Case did a fantastic game room tour. So I definitely want to follow suit and do that at some point. And I'll definitely do that hopefully this summer. So um. Yeah, my preschool days, my teacher brought in his NES. We was playing it before lunch. Yeah. I'm doing a house tour on Patreon. Oh, right on. It says I saw it grow. Yeah, man. Yeah, this this was the space, man. This this game room, I, re I man, I really did it in here, especially in 2020. Um, again, because at the start of 2020, I had like 300 subscribers. It's like 320, 325, something like that. And so just to, from that point, 
to be, you know, have 1100 subscribers since then, like that's insane. So whether you guys were, have been with me, uh, whether you guys were my original 52, uh, I say my original 52 because on my first year on YouTube, I have 52 subscribers by the end of one year on YouTube. So all those subscribers, I call them my original 52. So whether you're one of my original 52 or you just joined me 10 minutes ago, uh, thank you guys. Um, you know, thank you for the ride. It's been crazy. Uh, glad you guys are here. And also, uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're watching me for the first time and you haven't subscribed yet. So definitely do that. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, it's crazy now that I've gotten to the point of monetization now, you know, it's easy to get there, but it's harder to maintain it. So now I got to make sure, I mean, I don't think I'm going to lose, you know, 500 subscribers anytime soon, but got to make sure I keep my watch time up. So I got to make sure I'm consistent and putting out content that you guys want to see. Uh, speaking of which, what do you, what do you guys want to see? Is there's anything uh, specific you guys want me to make a video about? I do have some more camera oriented stuff coming up because there were some of my YouTubers, some of my subscribers that asked me some questions, some camera questions, and uh, I was going to make a video about that. And so I got another Star Wars theme one coming up too. We got to talk about the durability of those lightsabers that I um, that I used to collect. And so we're going to see, uh, and you know, test them and test their strength. And I've got a really cool, um, test for that coming up. And so I just got to get with the, uh, the testers and do some more filming there, but it's got some more stuff like that coming up. Of course, I got some more PlayStation three coming up. That'll be the stuff that comes up probably next. Um, because I'm going to dive in and play some more PlayStation games tonight. So I'll probably uh, drop another PlayStation 3 Hidden Gems video because there's still a lot of games that I don't think anybody's heard of that you might want to get before it goes up in price. So, um, yeah, we definitely got to talk about that. Um, speaking of Star Wars, I played a Star Wars game this past Friday. Oh, which one was that? Think about doing a vid on my PlayStation 2 game collection. Yeah, yeah. I remember he had Mario Brothers one thing. Oh, I'm talking about your teacher had the Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. Jeopardy would sound awful to play on the NES because you. I imagine you have to spell things out, and you would probably have to spell them correctly. That sounds terrible. I think I would like to see a cool video on how you arrange your game room to your liking. Yeah, and I, I thought about that because. Uh, I want to do some companion videos to my game room tour and my method for how I store and collect them, which, I mean, I, I put everything alphabetical order on the shelves, uh, but I would definitely like to make a video based on that to a uh, partner with a game room tour uh, video. So also I want to do another room tour video, but I want to do it from the production side. So I want to go over uh, the camera I'm using right now, which if you guys have looked at my community page, I took a picture of my current camera rig. It's pretty crazy. Um, I, I want to talk about that and do a rig build video to show people the parts that they can get to turn their, you know, their regular DSR, a DSLR mirrorless camera into more of like a cinema camera. And like I said, that setup, I take that into local businesses and film and take photos and stuff like that. And there is a bunch of different reasons why I wanted to rig my camera out. And the main reason why is because I wanted to buy a black magic camera this year. I wanted to buy like uh, 2020 and 2021 has been the era of cinema cameras. And there's so many cinema cameras that you can buy that are relatively cheap. Like you can get, I can get a, a Canon C100 Mark II for like two grand used right now. The, the black magic, the, the cinema 4k, which goes up to 4K 60 frames a second and a uh, ProRes RAW like that. Uh, you can buy that for like 1300 bucks for the body. Uh, the Blackmagic 6K Pro you can buy for 2500. The regular 6K you can get for 2000. Uh, Sony just released the FX3 for 3500. Like there's a lot of good like movie quality cameras that you can buy for under $5,000. And so uh, I was wanting to get into that this year, but I didn't really have the money for it. So instead I thought my, they, I'm shooting on the Canon 90 D and it has a really good, uh, it has a, a 4k HQ mode. It has uh, 120 frames a second at full HD. Um, 
you know, so it has uh, some functions, you know, that if I beefed it up a little bit, I'm using the Animos Ninja as well, which helps me get a record in ProRes uh, 10-bit 422 for the color. So a, a lot of cool stuff. I'll get into all that in future videos, but I can get more of a movie type look with that camera. And I spent uh, like 500 on the rig versus buying a black magic for 1300. So, and that's just for the body. I would still have to rig that out, which when I'm said and done would be like 2,800 bucks when I did the math. So do I, do I regret not collaborating with Danny Mullen? No, I don't. I'm glad I met him though. I'm glad I met him. And that for me was, a. Uh, was very like that was a very eye-opening experience even just to to physically meet someone who's doing it on that high a level like he does youtube full-time for a living he acts like you know a troll and kind of like a jackass in his videos but i can tell meeting him in person he's not exactly who he portrays himself to be on youtube on youtube he's kind of like the funny kind of frat guy this and that but danny mullen is a he's an intelligent character and he uh, thinks about things very analytically. Like he, he's definitely a lot smarter than he leads on. And, and that's totally okay. Like I, and for that, it was good to meet somebody like that because I'm like, this is a pro YouTuber, a pro content creator and influencer. And even the fact that he said, man, like, he was, you know, cause we, uh, when I, when I ran into him, first thing I asked him, I'm like, Oh, that's cool. Like you guys doing YouTube, what camera are you shooting on? I started geeking out about cameras a little bit. He's like, Oh man, you talk like, you know what you're doing. Like, man, you should come with us. And you know, we, we're going to get an RV. We're going to head out West and you can come make content with us and be on the channel and you can still do your own channel and you can grow it like that. And da 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 da. Like I said, just the fact that he said all of that like was cool. So it was that. And then in the same year, I had a Metal Jesus Rocks, like Metal Jesus Rocks be watching my videos and he'd be commenting on some of my videos. Like that's super cool. Like, so between that, like I, here's two very, very high level YouTubers giving me acknowledgement of any kind. Like it's fantastic. So for me, that was enough for me to really try to focus on YouTube in 2020, really try to be more professional and up my production and really invest back into my craft. And, you know, I watched a bunch of videos and did a lot of tests and learned a lot, trained myself on how to use. Cause like I said, all this stuff, you watch my videos from three years ago. Like I didn't have cameras. I didn't have lights and I sound. I didn't know how to do three point lighting and things like that. Like all that stuff I had to learn. And, you know, I really, double down on teaching myself a lot of that in 2020. So meeting him was a fantastic experience. I don't regret not going with him because again, uh, he's more of a sketch comedy artist. And what I do is photography slash, you know, video games. Like it's just, we're literally just from two different worlds. And so I would have either had to change my content to that or it wouldn't have blended very well. Like, I don't think that there's a lot of correlation between the two genres of film. Definitely some of his uh, subscribers did join my channel after I made that video, which is awesome. And they've been really great. Uh, a few of them tried to criticize me in that video and try to claim that I was just, you know, snowflaking or I was just too insensitive to his kind of brand of shock comedy, but it's like, bro, like I grew up in the, I grew up in the eighties and nineties. Like, you know what I mean? Like I get shocked for breakfast, like, you know, politically incorrect. Like I grew up, you know, on toxic masculinity and rape culture. Like, like it's fine. Like it wasn't so much that it was just simply that I just don't make that kind of content. I make video game videos. So that has nothing to do with sketch comedy and pulling pranks on people and, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, so he probably would have just found it lame to hang out with me after a while. But again, I'm super glad I met him. He was a super nice guy. He and his friend Leo, I think is the long hair guy. But Leo told me when I was talking to him, he said, man, this is the kind of, he told me, and it's in my video, but he said, this is the kind of shit you got to do to get noticed on YouTube. Like he had his brand of comedy that wasn't taken off, but he had to kind of change who he was to gain traction. And for me, I just didn't want to do that because I mean, for the equivalent for me would be to become a switch YouTuber, I guess I would literally kill myself if I became a switch YouTuber. So if you guys see me talking about switch and Hey guys, here's the new eShop videos. Tell me in the comments to kill myself. Please remind me that I need to do that because like, I don't want to have to do the compromise 
to be successful. I'll be successful because I won't give up. And I tell a lot of people that all the time, like if you want to be successful on YouTube, as long as you don't give up, you win. You know what I mean? The only way you can fail at this is if you stop doing it. So, I mean, that's that's just the, the long and short of it. But I'm super happy I met Danny Mullen. I thank him all the time. I still follow his content and all that stuff and uh, comment on his videos from time to time. Super good dude. Um, Let's see. I missed a bunch of stuff because y'all, man, y'all be getting me rambling, man. I'm sorry. Let's see. Damn, I'm going to miss like 30 comments. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. I'm catching up, guys. I promise. So he's doing a house tour on Patreon. So if y'all get on the if y'all get on the professor Patreon, which I, I want to start a Patreon this year as well, but I don't know what I'm going to do on it, though. But I would definitely like to get into that. So I can make the anti-e-beggars mad, which I love to, man, they're such a joke. <laughs> like their whole community is trash. Like, I don't know, like guys, like take my word of advice, man, tr whatever you guys are passionate about in life, try to get paid for it. Because if you, that's, that's how you work at a career where you don't feel like you're at work. You know, somebody who's like a pro basketball player, all you do is eat, sleep and breathe basketball. Like basketball is like life to you. That's what got you out of the mean streets or whatever, what puts you through college, what you're super happy and passionate about what you want to do more than anything else. You mean to tell me I can get paid for that? Like, and join a pro team and like make millions of dollars, be able to support my family and travel and do all that. Who wouldn't want to do that? Who wouldn't want to get paid to do what they're passionate about? And if they're good at it, and that's the, the main thing I would say for everybody wanting to do YouTube, the difference between people who take off on YouTube and people who don't is are you adding value to your viewers? Like if you're adding, if you're entertaining, if your video is educational and helping people learn something, like those are the things that get people to pop off. If you're just like, oh, hey, look at me. I'm walking around doing stuff. I need a thousand subscribers. You know what I'm saying? Oh, check out my page. If you're just doing stuff just to do it, like, no, like that's, that's not what's hot in the streets out here. So um, yeah. Absolutely. If I could, in a perfect world, do this for a living and, you know, support my family like this, like I would totally do that and be my own boss and use YouTube to expand my brand elsewhere. Because like I said, I do photography and I want to get more into film. I'm actually going to do a short film this year. That's my goal by the end of the year is to shoot a short film. Um, also, I'd li love to make some merchandise. I'm talking with some graphic designers now about making an official logo for my channel, which is something that I don't have. But uh, you look at people like, you know, like J Love 81 or Gaming Off the Grid or Retro Rivals, they all kind of have their own like logo. Uh, Waves and Games here in the chat, like they got their own logo. Like, I, I want a logo. Like, I think that'd be super cool. So I, I would love to do that and uh, get into that, and, like, have a, a hat with my YouTube channel on it. How cool would that be? Like, so I don't know. But let's see. Speaking of Star Wars, I played Star Wars. Oh, I already read that. Uh, let's see. And maybe talk about things you can buy to spice up the look of your gaming room. Yeah, I want to do more videos on that. I did a video on this light here, which is like just under 100 bucks for this light. Uh, and I use this in literally in every video. Like I said, 100 bucks for a light might seem kind of expensive. But again, I use it on every single video. Uh, this ring light that I have just off screen. So a ring light like this, this ring light, you can get some cheaper ones. I like ring lights like this because I can change the intensity of the light. I can even change the temperature, make it warmer or uh, warmer or add more daylight to it. And so, you know, those are the more expensive ones. Also, the fact that this is a bigger one at like 19 inches, like those are, you know, can be like 120 to 150 bucks. But again, I use this literally for like 200 videos. Like I use it every time I film. I uh, pro tip. I put uh, this little diffuser on it. You can get this on Amazon for like five bucks. And I just use some clamps and clamp that on there when I turn on the light. So I get more of a softer highlight roll off. And so it looks better, looks more professional but I can still see the rings in my eyes if I want to do the catch light thing. So I can still get the catch light, but it's just a much smoother, softer, and not so harsh uh, look. Eventually, I finally just upgraded to uh, this cob light, 
by uh, and I want to do a review on this light too because it was expensive. It's three hundred bucks, but again, like as far as other lights in this class, it's what's called a cob light. So it's like a bunch of LEDs like kind of strung together to make one big LED and puts off a really good light. It's got this nice lantern on it. So it hits my light or hits my face super softly. Uh, equivalents to this light would be like the uh, the Godox lights or like the Aperture 120D, which is a hugely popular uh, light. If you're watching any of like the more professional channels or like the uh, the filmmaking photography channels, they all use the uh, Aperture lights. But the 120D is like a thousand bucks. Um, when you buy it with the stand and with the dome and all that, like you're looking at a thousand dollars. So to get that same quality for 300 bucks, I was all over that. So, and again, that was an expensive investment, but I'm going to use this on literally every video I shoot. So, you know, so he played the force unleashed. Okay. Okay. So definitely, but I, I definitely want to talk about some cheap, uh, things like another one is, Another one is this microphone here. And luckily, for the most part, you don't have to spend an arm and a leg to get good sound. Like this microphone here. So first of all, this mic stand is like a $15 mic stand. And the actual mic itself, this thing was like 35 bucks. And it sounds really good, like $35 mic. So if you can't afford $35 for your YouTube setup, then you know, uh, I don't know if maybe you should, I mean, you know, if you're making YouTube videos just to make them, cause you want to talk about what you want to talk about, that's totally fine. But if you want to grow on YouTube, if you want to eventually, um, you know, make it a career or whatever, like you got to put the money back into your YouTube channel. You absolutely have to do that. And, you know, I, I definitely, now that I'm, mo I'm getting monetized and I definitely want to do a Patreon and sell merchandise and stuff. And most of that money is just going to go back into improving the equipment and stuff in here. Um, cause like I said, I've got a lot of ghetto workarounds going on right now, but I definitely want to invest in some more expensive equipment just so, you know, I, the, to help me stand out. Um, so yeah, but yeah, if you're wanting to grow, but you're not wanting to invest in lighting and invest in new camera gear and invest in new audio equipment. Cause again, uh, like Ken's games collection, he uses like the, uh, he uses like a $20 lavalier mic, um, like the Boya mic again, and his, his sound quality sounds really good. Um, that and me, when I, I started out on my Blackberry cell phone and I couldn't afford a new camera, but I could afford an upgrade on my cell phone. So I said, Hey, what's the cell phone was the best camera that I can get with X amount of dollars. And I got that phone and then I got the next phone and eventually I saved up and bought a camera and whatnot. And then I bought another camera and it just escalates from there. But, you know, of course that was all five years in the making, but as long as you're constantly trying to improve and put back into it, um, you know, it'll happen. It'll happen. So I definitely want to, uh, but I'll talk about all of that more when I give my studio tour. Cause I'm gonna do a game room tour where I'm looking at my video game collection and a studio tour where I'm looking at my YouTube studio setup as far as the things I use to make YouTube videos. So, um, and maybe I'll do one with the, my streaming setup too. My streaming setup is not anything spectacular. Shout out to StreamYard though, because even this free version of StreamYard is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I think I actually might pay for the paid version of StreamYard because I, I can do a lot more cool stuff on it. Um, let's see. Gary Spencer used the force <laughs> with Master Yoda. That sounds like a TV show, using the force with Master Yoda. Personally, my collecting pet peeves is definitely greatest hits. Oh yeah, I yeah I, I read your comment and I didn't uh, answer that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, man. Greatest hits. I hate to say it because I hate to be that person, but man, if I got a a copy of like a greatest hits copy, it drives me absolutely nuts. Or if I just don't have the original case in general, like uh, this game over here. Let's see where is it. So this is one of the few, and I've been weeding these out over the last several years, but this is one of the few games uh, that I have in, gen in a generic case. Like, And it says on there, Utagi Myth of Demons. Okay, this is a generic case of the first Utagi game 
on the original Xbox. Inside of it, though, is actually Utagi 2, Immortal Warriors. This game is super expensive now, so it's been hard for me to buy um, to buy the case because I would like to... So I'll probably end up selling this used and use the money from that towards a clean copy, like a complete copy. So, Because I think uh, complete in box, this game is like 100 bucks, but used... I think I can get almost half for that. So I could get Utagi 2 complete for like 50, 60 bucks if I do that route. Um, I also found another copy of the original Utagi recently for like five bucks. So I thought about maybe selling it too and selling both of those towards the price of a clean version of Utagi 2. Or I might take my copy of Utagi 1 and give it to Scott from Retro Rivals, because I've been trying to put him onto those games for a minute, so I might just get the info and send that up to my boy, but, because it's an expensive game too, but I, I didn't pay but a couple bucks for it, so, because they didn't know what it was. But J-Chip, I definitely, I definitely share that pet peeve. I hate, hate, hate generic cases and uh, greatest hits cases. Which is crazy because I'm looking at my PlayStation 1 collection. I have several greatest hits cases over there. And it didn't seem to bother me much back then. But uh, now, it's like, I don't know. Uh, I think it's messing with just messing with the uniformity on the shelf. Um, let's see. Do I have Def Jam Vendetta Fight for New York on PS2? Yes, I do. That game just hit 200 bucks. But uh, yeah, I got it somewhere. We'll see. <laughs> Whoa, where'd it go? Okay, don't know where it's at right now. I must not have put it back on the shelf. Hmm. Yeah, it's around here somewhere. Not gonna look for it, but so yeah, I don't know where I put it, but I know I own it. Because we've talked about it on this channel before. I've live streamed it before. And uh, I've reviewed... Oh, there it is. I was going to say, I know I'm not tripping. Like I said, I even used it in a thumbnail recently, which is why I was over there. I was with the others. So here's going to be a quick flex. So I got it. So there it is. Complete for the PS2. Complete for the original Xbox. And also, complete for the PSP. And most people don't know that this game exists. This is Def Jam Fight for New York, The Takeover. And this game looks fantastic. I've streamed this one before, too. But, uh, yeah, I got this one for 20 bucks. I got this one for $3.95. Again, I'll, I'll show this another time, but you can't see the sticker because... I don't have the focus active, but the autofocus active, so I can't put it up. Otherwise, it's out of focus. But I got that for $3.95, and I got this one for $6.99. So all three of these I got dirt cheap forever ago. And that being said, guys, if you don't have a Def Jam icon yet for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, go buy that today. Both of the versions of that game you can have for under 30 bucks, And, uh... It's not the greatest. It's definitely Icon is definitely the weakest in the series, which is why it would be a shame to pay a hundred bucks for that game, you know, a year from now. So definitely go ahead and buy them cheap so you can have the whole set in your collection. And uh, yeah, don't play yourself. So you still have the first one. Let's see. Let's see here right now. Sorry, I was trying to catch up here. Again, man, I'll be ranting out here. Any Vita games I'm looking for? Uh, yeah, I can't think of them right now, but I'm I'm always looking for Vita games in general. Uh, right now, I have about 30 games in my Vita collection, which is definitely not enough. I definitely need more. I do want to go back. 
Oh, I'm about to. <laughs> Excuse me. I felt the sneeze coming, but it wouldn't come. So I definitely want to go back and get the uh, Dying Gun Rampa games, uh, and just like a bunch of like the Vita has a bunch of like kind of like anime style like RPGs and action RPGs and a lot of quirky games on the Vita um, that I would just like to get just cause. So absolutely. Let's see. Like find imprint. Okay, still talking about the Force Unleash. So yeah, to answer your question, yeah, I got it. I I want it on the GameCube. So that's the only version of uh, Fight for New York I don't have right now is the GameCube version. So yeah, Gary says I'll continue to make videos. Absolutely, man. That's the only way. That's the only way you win at YouTube is if you don't stop. Uh, like I said. I watch, I probably watch 60 hours of YouTube a week. Like I watch a lot. Like I can, I consume a lot of content and so do the other hundreds of millions of people who watch YouTube every day. So, um, yeah, there's enough views out there to go around even in 2021. Like I said, me personally right now, I'm subscribed to like 250 channels right now. So and and some of those video, some of those uh, people I unsubscribe from, you know, if it gets to the point where they're not making content anymore or I'm not liking the way their content is going or whatever the case, like I'll unsubscribe. Like I said, it's um, I do hear YouTubers complaining about that. Like, why are my subs leaving and complaining like, uh, you know, saying it's not cool to sub and then unsubscribe? I disagree with that. Um, like I said, it's easy to get the subscribers, but it's your job to keep them. So if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, if you're not consistent enough for them, if your content is going in a different direction, then they might unsubscribe from you. And that's okay. Like I said, that's okay. It'd be like that sometimes. Like I said, if I, I like, oh, wait, who is this person I'm subscribed to? And I look and I see they ain't put out a video in like a year or something like that. Or like, oh, like I, this is somebody I just don't even watch. Like I'll just unsubscribe from them. Because again, right now I'm subscribed to 250 different people. So it's hard enough trying to catch up. I know y'all be putting out videos all the time that I'll be missing simply because it's just too many. And that's okay. Like I said, I know people, it's funny because looking at my analytics. Uh, so like on any given video and it's any video. So here's a YouTube tip for you guys based on analytics. And this is true across the board for most YouTubers that every video you put out 75% of those views come from first time watchers or people who are not subscribed to your channel. So think about that. Every video you put out only about 25% of the people who watch it are subscribed to you. So it's important to try your best on every video and make that good impression because most of the time, the people who watch your video are watching you for the first time. So you want to have a good impression to get them to stay. And there's been people like, I'll watch their video and it's like, oh, that's a cool video, but I won't subscribe to them. And then they'll come out with another video. It's like, I got to watch a few videos from them. And then I'll say, oh, well, since I'm watching all this person's videos, I might as well subscribe type of thing, you know? And so that happens a lot with people that I've subscribed to. Like, I'll watch their video. I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's cute. Then I'll watch another one. Like, dang, that one's pretty good too. And then like third or fourth one, I'm like, oh, I'll go ahead and subscribe. So it's true. Like most people who watch your videos aren't even subscribed to you. That's crazy. I My jaw dropped to the floor when I seen that. I'm like, for real? Because one of my videos recently, I put out, it said like uh, 1,200 views. And I'm like, oh, that's really good for me for like the first three weeks. And right now I got like 1400 subscribers. So I'm like, oh man, almost all my subscribers watch my video. And then I looked at the analytics, I'm like 25% of them. So maybe like two or 300 of them actually watched it. I'm like, oh snaps. So, but like I said, it's like that for almost every video for almost every creator, which is interesting. Uh, that's just the way people consume content, I guess. Almond Milk says, appreciate the response. Boy, boy, Radical Rick gonna try to flame you for being a P. Ah, oh, man, I yeah, Radical Rick can eat a radical dick. Okay, <laughs> so I shouldn't say that. Ah, <laughs> uh, but that's for real, man. Like, look, man, you think I'm gonna like? It's crazy because some of these YouTubers really be pressed because they get called out by these anti e beggars or whatever the case. Now, um. Uh, now, some of them need to be pressed. Like, uh, who's that new girl? Cassandra. Um, 
she she seems like a nice girl. She seems like a cool chick. Like she is putting out videos, doing her thing, you know. And I was watching a uh, retro video game star got on a uh, uh, Darius Truxton for calling her out. And I watched Darius Truxton's video, and he was making fun of her stage presence. You know, just the way she looks at the camera. And like I said, she's you can tell she's not very comfortable on camera, and that's fine. Like I wasn't either. You know what I'm saying? Like I wish we all could have fantastic looking videos like Darius Truxton. I wish we all had the production values that Darius Truxton has. You know, I would love to shoot in a dirty apartment with Esco water sitting on the desk and it looked like my apartment smells like balls. I wish I could do that. Okay. I wish I could propose to female, you know, YouTubers with my Amiibo toys. I wish I could do that, but we all can't be as lucky as Darius Truxton. I wish I could get my video taken down after stealing somebody else's video one for one and putting it on my channel like it's mine. But again, I'm not fortunate enough to be Darius Truxton. So like I said, it'll be people like that trying to make fun of these new YouTubers. And it's really because she's a girl. Like I said, at the end of the day, they're all beta male sexist anyway, you know, because that's some lame shit. They're the, they're the type of dudes that's like, that'll try to approach a girl and she wants attention. You know, she might be dressed, you know, sexy or whatever. So she's trying to get the attention, but she don't want the attention from you because you a creep and being all weird and stuff. So you try to approach this girl and she shoots you down. So because she shot you down, she's a whore. <laughs> Y'all know the ones I'm talking about. Y'all know the ones I'm talking about, but it's these kind of, it's those kind of guys. Like, look, man, I can't take no nobody like that serious. Luckily, I've stayed away from most of the drama on YouTube and I haven't really gone back and forth with another YouTuber. But even if I did, I don't care, bro. Like I, like I said, I'm grow up African-American in Kansas. Like people call me worse things here in my own city than people do on YouTube. I work at middle in a middle school for gr crying out loud. A middle school teacher. OK, middle schoolers are terrible people. OK, they're the worst. OK, so if I can take the verbal abuse from them. I'm sure I'll be fine on YouTube where it's people that I can't even see in the flesh and people who, you know, wouldn't obviously call me out if we were in person. It would be all smiles because they wouldn't want to catch the fade. But anyway, yeah, see, y'all y'all get me on this tangent today. Look, I said I was going to stop at two hours. We had two and a half hours. Let me uh, let me read these comments. And I'm going to bust out these last two pickups. Making money from the internet isn't inherently evil. Manipulating, finessing people is bad, though. And that's absolutely true. And there are a few channels that do that. Like I said, Wood Hawker, um, he, yeah, man, he be on some weird stuff. And, and it's messed up because he knows that his fan base is made up of children. You know, and Overthink Gaming has called him out on this several times. And Wood Hawker will do the whole thing like, guys, I told you, stop sending me stuff. And he says that knowing that they're going to keep sending him stuff. And he'll take the stuff that he sends him and keep what he likes and sells the rest. Or he'll give it away, you know, and giveaways and stuff like that. That's pretty lame, especially when you're doing that to kids. Like, that's all bad. So Wood Hawker deserves all the hate that he gets for that because if he really wanted these kids to stop sending him stuff, he would, he would deactivate his PO box. Like he would take that down, but he continues to put it in the links of every one of his videos. So you can send him stuff, even though he says, guys, stop sending me stuff. Like that's lame. Like I'm not, I'm not for that at all. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, most of these YouTubers, they just, they're just big YouTubers. And so they get hate just because they're the biggest thing in the building. And that's, you know, that goes with the territory. Most YouTubers in the space are doing fine, just doing what they're supposed to do. There are sleazes out there for sure, but it's not as rampant as people make it out to be. Like there are some big channels that scam people, but again, like if these people, like we talked about with the earlier, with the uh, casual gamers, if these people are cool with getting scammed, if they want to be, you know, white wells and buy super expensive stuff and send to the YouTubers just so they can feel like they're a part of the channel, if that's what they want to do, then, hey, I mean, you, uh, that, that's they that's their choice to do that. So, um, yeah, for sure. So let's see if you get notified when you get a free pass to E3. What would be the first thing you say and make a vlog? Oh, I would definitely vlog that. I would love to. I, I my, and my goal is to go to one of these uh, retro shows. Like, I would love to do a vlog at E3. E3 is not as big as it used to be, honestly. 
but uh definitely there's some e3 shows that i wish i were there for i wish i was there in 2001 where they unveiled metal gear solid sons of liberty for the first time to be those 12 people in that room the first 12 people to see that trailer uh to see the game in motion for the first time that probably oh my god that would have blown me away to be there when old boy from playstation got on stage and hit him with the 299 like yeah there's some definitely some e3 moments i wish i could have been there for and i would have vlogged it and done all that and it would have been fantastic sadly e3 like i said is not as big as it used to be but it's still definitely worth going to in my opinion and i would love to go and i would definitely record it if i did um i do want to go to one of these video game shows this summer and uh go out there if there's one close enough for me to drive because i don't really like flying if I can drive, if I can spend like an eight hour drive to get out to one of these places and just be there for a day or so and then come back, you know, like they do the uh, the Mo games in uh, in uh, Missouri. And I think they do that in St. Louis or KC Mo or somewhere, something like that. So next time they do that one, the Mo games convention, I'm definitely going to that because that's something I can drive to being, you know, uh, three hours from the border here in Kansas. So I would definitely go do that. That would be super cool. Yep, Garrett, no snack for you. You see, I think you would make good quality interviews with people in the gaming industry. Yeah, that is actually, that, that's a good, uh, that's interesting that you mentioned that because that is something I would like to do one day. Um, you know, once I get, if I, if, you know, God willing, I get big enough to actually know some of these bigger people on a, on a more personal level. Um and like I said, eventually in the future, that'll be the case, right? Like uh, some of my favorite YouTubers that I'm cool with right now, like uh, Professor Joe Casey, Retro Rivals, Pac-Man Case, um, they're going to be huge one day. They are definitely going to be huge one day. And then I'll be able to say, I know those guys. And uh, yeah, so man, y'all don't forget about me, man, when y'all get to the top out here. Y'all remember your boy old lightsaber, okay? Uh, Colin is in the house, says, I wouldn't say I'm good at any of the few things I'm passionate about. I just say slightly above meta core or mediocre. Uh oh, camera just died. So if you guys can hear me, my camera just died. Cause I don't, let me switch my battery real quick. Let's see if I can get back in it. Oh, I gotta take it off the tripod. So, excuse me. Come on. Okay, so. That's not going to work. I'm going to have to switch. Hold on. Ugh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let's see. All right. So I'm getting super ghetto with it. If y'all can see me out here. Okay. So I just had to switch to my camera on my uh, laptop because my uh, actually still, it doesn't look awful though right? And this old 720p camera. Uh, yeah, my battery died in my uh, my 90D. So we rocking like this. Or the, like I said, I only got a few more. Actually, I think I'm going to save these games for the next video. So we'll just do it like that. But I'll definitely be live streaming again this week, guys, after school sometime. I don't know which day. Maybe like Tuesday or Wednesday or something. I do want to try to shoot another video tonight before I go to bed. So I can put like an actual content video up. But uh, like I said, this doesn't look terrible. It does, definitely doesn't look as good as it did a moment ago. And it's definitely more zoomed in. But this isn't this isn't terrible. Let's see. Going on. Let's see. I'm already eating chips. I need to sit here and finish dinner too. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Call my generic cases. <laughs> I said I call my generic cases my hall of shame. Absolutely, man. Generic cases are awful. But luckily, the generic cases I do have, like I said, I have a on the PlayStation 1, I got Jackie Chan Stuntmaster in a generic case. 
So that one is kind of expensive now to have complete in box, but I would like to own that one. It's kind of, there's a pretty cool beat em up slash action platformer. This, uh, this camera is definitely darker though. I'm definitely not at, uh, my aperture is definitely not at 1.8 on this machine. So give me just a second. I wonder what the aperture is on this bad boy. Probably uh, probably five, six or higher. So let me do this. So I can get up and turn that, but I like connecting with my phone because it makes me feel more like an official YouTuber if I just use the app. But uh, what else am I missing? Let's see. Def Jam Fight for New York is in my hall of shame. I bought it for $1 on a 10 for 10 loose and a yellow sheet. On a PS2 clear, and you know what though, but PlayStation th uh, two, um, PlayStation two uh, cases are easily remanufactured. So I see those on Facebook all the time. People will take uh, you know expensive or rare games and like make a, a reprint a new case for it. So you can complete that by going that route. And I might do that for Utagi uh, two Immortal Warriors. It won't have a manual with it, but it you know it will look uniform on my shelf. So I might get a repro case for it. It's not like I would try to resell it for you know complete in price boxes anyway, because I want to do them dirty like that. But let's see here now. Let's brighten this up a bit. Yeah, see. So oh no, that's the. Uh, the Kelvin. I don't want to mess with the Kelvin. I'll make it a little more daylight. Then I'll boost it a little bit to make it a little brighter. Ooh, whoop, whoop. That's cool. I can do that though, just on my phone. So, anyway, it says it's funny on my streams when I'd play a game that I bought and he didn't know the name of the game and never heard of it. He'd be like, What the hell is this? <laughs> what game is this? Uh, lightsaber. You're worse than a preacher telling the church it won't be long with today. Man, I know. I know. I'm sorry, guys, but I, I ramble a lot. Again, I was I told myself I was going to stop 40 minutes ago. My camera done died <laughs> and everything. And, uh, oh, shoot. You know why my camera died? Because I had it on the 4K setting. I should have toned it down. If I had toned it down to 10, because I was going to say last time I streamed, uh, I got three and a half hours. And that was me. And I replace the battery right before the stream began. So that's what it was. But if you didn't see my camera, guys, I guess I'll show you. So this is what I'm doing with my camera. So it's like a whole like rig now. I got the follow focus here. I'm using the Atomos Ninja, which is a crazy monitor that also is a recorder. So that's going to allow me to record in slightly higher qualities because uh, this camera can, when it's uh, recording externally, meaning from another source like a monitor, you can get a little bit more out of it than you can when you're recording internally, i.e. to just the SD card. Um, not so much in this camera. I bought the Atomos, though, because eventually when I upgrade from this Canon 90D, I'm going to go to the R system of Canon camera. So if, even if I get the regular EOS R, I'll be able to record a 10-bit 422 and ProRes, and so in 4K, so that will look super dope. Um, even if I get like a, and if I get an R5 or R6, I'll be able to do even more than that. So definitely, I'll get cinema camera quality. And I feel like this setup is equivalent to the Blackmagic 4K, um, just with the image and stuff like that. Like I can't shoot log, but I got Cine style on here, so I can shoot flat, a flatter image and whatnot. So. Yeah, it's doing it, it. It's pretty serious. I'm still waiting for the stream to end so I can play on. So I'm sorry, man. Uh, is that what we about to do? Uh, Professor, are you about to play? So, all right, guys, I'm about to end the stream in a minute. So we all going to go hop over to Professor Joe Casey's stream real fast, real quick. Let me uh, do something real fast. And I can't stay up for long. So like I said, I got to go to bed. I, I got to finish dinner. I want to do some playing myself, but I'll uh, go upstairs and watch you on my phone here for a little bit. But let me see. Let's go. No, let's do this instead. But uh, yeah, I do want to post this channel up here in a second. So you can see what's popping. And I'm just 
Ugh, sorry, all these ads and stuff popping up. But yeah, so when I end the stream in a second, guys, if y'all want to hop, hop over to Professor Joe Casey's channel and we can watch him play for a bit, that would be super dope if y'all would do that. And he's been blowing up, guys, too. Joe Casey puts in work, man, and he got himself up to 448 right now. He has a whole nother channel where he's sitting at. He's already monetized on that channel and all that, doing big things on his other channel. But let me just go here, share screen, uh, share window. Oh, I don't have the other window up. Let's just do this. Okay, so I don't know if I'm sharing, but boom. If I am sharing, here it is. This is Joe Casey's channel, Video Gaming with the Professor. And so here we go. Like I say, he's been going hard. So he, this is the channel, guys. So if you see this when you go to it, that's how you know you're in the right place. And so when he starts streaming, if y'all from this chat, I want y'all to put it in his chat. Say, we're here from Lightsaber Samurai. So I want to see who goes over. Even if y'all just hop over for a few minutes, go show my homie some love. I'm going to stop sharing that. But like I said, I was going to show these last two uh, games. I'm going to hold these off. And we'll talk about that later this week when I go over the other games that I am going to talk about as far as pickups. Budget Gaming is in the house. What's up, Ian? What's going on, sir? So I just got here. How much did that cost? Uh, this, we'll talk about it. Like I said, uh, I'm going to do a video where I built it because this is just a Canon 90D. The 90D itself for the body, uh, I got it for a thousand bucks. This lens on here, which is a fantastic lens. I love Sigma art lenses. This is the uh, 18 to 35 one eight. This lens is about 700 bucks. And uh, we'll talk about some of the other stuff. Like I said, some of parts of this rig I had to ball out for. Some of the parts I definitely skimped out on so i'll show you what to skimp out for like for instance follow focus units are very expensive this one though is a follow focus unit from uh newer which is like 40 bucks so that's definitely uh a good value for that because follow focus units like i said even the cheapest ones are like a hundred and up so to get a good quality one for 40 dollars was insane so we'll definitely talk about this follow focus unit uh, the handle was pretty cheap. The cage is pretty cheap and all that stuff too. So we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. And um, when I build it out, I'll, I'll talk about each part and we'll talk about how much it costs along the way. And of course I'll have links so you can go check the stuff out yourself. If you got um, 80D, 90D, I know, um, oh, uh, my boy, uh, I'm spacing on his name. <laughs> uh, I was spacing on my friend's name. I know he uses a, a, a 7D Mark II. Uh, for his content. M50 is another great camera to use. I got my M50 somewhere upstairs. So we'll make a we'll make a rig for it too. Bro, just watch the replay. You should definitely think of teaching a photography class. Uh, I also, in addition to teaching at uh, this middle school here, I also work at a rec center and I have been playing with the idea of teaching a uh, intro to photography class there. Um, but I just been kind of, I'm in the preliminary stages of that, just kind of building the curriculum and what it's going to consist of working out the logistics because, you know, um, not everybody, you know, I don't want you to have to have a camera, uh, and the, to join the class. Like I said, you can, a lot of the tips with photography, you can do on a smartphone with a camera on it. So, uh, that will be like the requirement just to have your phone and we'll do a lot of it like that. So, but yeah, I have been thinking about that to make a little class like that. I personally don't think I'm that good enough a photographer to do that, but it's crazy like how much I've learned in the last couple of years. So, um, you know, like I said, I think I've learned enough where I can show somebody something. So uh, definitely going to do that. But guys, I'm going to get out of here because we are almost at the three hour mark again. I told myself I wasn't going to go over two hours and I did it again. But if you guys like this content, go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe. If you haven't done so already, you'll be glad you did. Ian says that's a lot of money, but it really makes a big difference in quality. Uh, yeah, absolutely, man. Especially when you're doing paid gigs. If I walk in, uh, I got one of my cameras over here. So here's a, a budget setup that I, I like to use. I This is the uh, setup I use for most of uh, early 2020, for like the first half of 2020, uh, got through. And 
like I said, I did it with just the Canon T6i in this 24 millimeter lens here. So this was my setup for the early part of 2020. Uh, so like my Xbox Hidden Gems Part 2 video I shot on this, uh, the, the, the video I shot on the Retrocade I did on this camera. So a bunch of videos uh, I shot on this setup. But if you go into like a local business, like, hey, I want to I want to shoot a, a quick video for you, you know, make you some content on Instagram, you know, and, you know, try to talk about charging them some money. They're going to look at this and be like, uh, no, nah, I don't think you're what we're looking for. But if you walk in there like this, and like, hey, all right, man, we're going to do some shooting, man. Like, you know, what's going on? Like, I I, I make uh, films and, you know, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Like I said, just coming in with this, there's a psychological effect to having a setup this big versus this. And so, again, you can get the job done with either setup, but this is going to allow you to do the job easier. And like I said, the psychological effect of it being so large, this looks more professional than this. And so that's why you do it. Again, uh, to have some of the functionality that I would have with a cinema camera, you need a rig like that for it. Um, so JC is out. Thanks. Have a good night. Hey, thank you for stopping by. Appreciate it. Looks like a, oh, on the wall here. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. This is a uh, Masamune. This is Sephiroth sword from Final Fantasy VII. My uh, little brother got that for me for my birthday like, years and years ago. Uh, so yeah. But uh, yeah, guys, I I'm gonna call it there. Again, two hours and fifty minutes. That is a that's that's a good night. So I appreciate everybody stopping by again. If you like this content, please go ahead hit that subscribe button. If you are new to the channel, you'll be glad you did. Uh, I, that's all I got for you guys. Lightsaber Samurai out. Peace. And uh, just said we got to talk about updating my camera. Yeah, man, Joe, we're going to get together, man, and talk about that. Um, and say hit me up on the gram or something, and we can go back and forth. I can give you some pointers and whatnot. Take a picture. Show me what you got, and I can maybe make some, just some suggestions about what you can buy, maybe to spruce up the camera you already have so you don't have to buy a whole new new camera. Uh, set up or whatever the case, uh, you know, uh, like I said, I give you some tips about lighting and whatnot too, to hopefully improve that. But guys, that's going to do it for me. Let's all go over to Joe Casey's channel. He's playing. What are you playing? Outlast? I think he's getting on the horror game tip. So I'm going to sit up on the couch upstairs, have my phone with me. I said, watch you for a little bit before I go to bed. I, I need to finish eating my dinner anyway. So I'll watch you while I finish my dinner and then uh, we'll keep it moving. So everybody to Joe Casey's channel. And I'm ending this broadcast. I'll see you guys. Peace.